Good evening. Good evening, everybody, and welcome. I'd like to call to order the City of Plantation Council meeting for June 8th. It's now called to order. City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilmember Anderson. Here. Councilmember Andreu. Here. Councilmember Fadgen. Here. Councilmember Horland. Here. Councilmember Sorrell. Here. Mayor Stoner. Here. Assistant City Attorney Morgan. Here. And tonight's opening remarks will be uh, provided by Councilmember Horland, who is visiting us remotely. She's right on the screen in a second. Can we go back to show her? I don't know what happened. She was on, and then she's off. Councilmember Horland, go ahead with remarks. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm sorry I couldn't be with everyone tonight. It looks like a full house. Um, I, mean, I was thinking about, I have some students there tonight, and I was thinking, you know, at the national, state, and local level, we are about to enter a time that some refer to as the silly season, whereas we all better know it is election time. Um, unfortunately, telling falsehoods and getting away with it seems to be quite prevalent these days, and spreading misinformation seems to be so much easier on social media. And I was thinking about this because I, as I said, have students here tonight who are honoring for their character. And they are setting the example for the children younger than them. And so it is that we should be setting an example for them. And I urge everyone, whether you're running for office or simply going about your everyday life, to look at these young citizens tonight and hopefully be inspired by them um, and be inspired to do better. There's a Jewish proverb which encourages one to lose with truth and right rather than gain with falsehood and wrong. And I think those are words we should all live by and our world will be better for it. So now I'd like to ask uh, Jackson Rouhani, Tatiana Trujillo, and Dale Eisenman to come forward. And if you're all wise, uh, students will meet us in the Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Make sure the green light is on. Is the center? Oh. Is the green light? There you go. Jason, help. That one. Oh, Got you to remind you're famous. Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, if the students will stay there, Mr. President, if you'll indulge me for a moment. Um, let me get my notes back up here. So, um, Jackson uh, is from Central Park Elementary, and Tatiana is from Plantation Park Elementary. And along with Timothy Wally from Seminole Middle and Victoria Matsnow from Plantation High School, they were all recently recognized as some Seminole Brown School Kids of Characters. Uh, the nine character traits used to teach education in Brown County schools are cooperation, responsibility, trustworthiness, citizenship, kindness, respect, honesty, self-control, tolerance, and patriotism. So I'd like to ask each of the students, and then we'll tell you a little bit about daily. Um, Jackson, if you'll go ahead and tell us what grade you're going into, um, which of these character traits you're most proud to exemplify and what your plans are for the summer. Go ahead, Jackson. I am, I am going into fifth grade. The, my favorite character trait that I example is citizenship. And my plans for the summer are to continue basketball, play flag football, continue a new book series because I finished Harry Potter <laughs> and take a vacation in Georgia. Great. Thanks, Tatiana, what about you? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Holland. We didn't hear what you said because we were busy applauding. What, what, uh, I was congratulating Jackson. What about Tatiana? Is she there from Plantation Park? Ready to go. Go ahead. Go ahead, Tatiana. What grade are you going into? I am going into into sixth grade in in Seminole Middle School. Okay. And, and what's the character trait you're most proud to exemplify, Tatiana? You know which one you won for at school. 
I don't really know what I type of... tolerance, respect, <laughs> the, uh, remember which one? I don't... Honesty. I'm most... I don't really know what type of trait I, I really like the most, but because I'm really... Because I'm really just proud to be represented by all of them. <laughs> what are you doing this summer, Tatiana? Uh, again, we didn't hear you. We were busy clapping and laughing here. What are, you, what, are you, what are you doing this summer? What are you doing this summer? I don't really know yet. I just, I'll just wait to see what life brings me. That for the future council and a future council member. And next, I'd like to introduce everyone to Daly Eisenman. Daly is the Rome Silver Knight winner from South Plantation High School for drama. Uh, Silver Knight awardees must have an outstanding academic history, but most importantly, an impressive and impacting community service record. Uh, this is where the character comes in, and I, why I wanted the younger students to appear with Daly this evening. And um, I'd like everyone to meet Daly, and I'd like to, her, for her to tell you a little bit about her project, The Daily Pantry, and what her future plans are. Daly? Okay, cool. Okay. You're good. I'm a little taller. It'll get you. Okay, <laughs> okay that one doesn't want that. It's, it's worked. Okay. okay. Hi. 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 I'm Daly. <laughs> And I'm here because I did a daily pantry. Um, the pantry was basically, it was built um, from the ground up by my drama program. Thank you, Jerob. Call out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he was a main builder for it. And he did amazing. Um, and we built it. And I did collection boxes, did a bunch of food collections from local businesses because people just wanted to donate. And its main target was food insecurity, not only homelessness, because um, during the pandemic, food insecurity within homes, for example, 25% of homes with kids actually are food insecure. That's one in four families, so that's like a lot. And it's not just you can't eat food. It means you're not getting the nutritional value you need with the food that you are currently eating because possibly you can't afford it. So my pantry is in front of the Unitarian Universalist congregation. It is by itself, so people can basically open it and take food if they need it, donate if they want to, without having to ask anyone. So it's kind of a way to keep their integrity because it's not just for people who are used to going. It's for people who may not want to ask for the help, and that's what it's for. So that's my project. Wonderful. Fabulous. Thank you. And your South Plantation graduation last weekend. What's next for you? Oh, um, I guess I'm going to be doing the drama summer camp. I am the current stage manager of the new drama program, summer camp. And after, I'm going to be interning at my magnet program. I'm going to continue that. And I have a part-time job. And then I'm, in August, I'm going to go to UCF and learn how to animate and make oh, nice. games. So, yeah. Congratulations, Jackson, Tatiana, and Daly. Um, I'm going to ask if Ms. Uh, Michelle Posado can take a picture of the students. I'm sorry I'm not there. And Mr. President, thank you. Um, you know, I instituted this I Love the Pro, uh, Pled Pro Pledge Program so that we could all highlight the fabulous young people in our community uh, and show the community the wonderful things that they're achieving. So uh, thank you for indulging me this evening. I was right there with all of you guys. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, let's move on with the meeting. Thank you, Councilmember Horan. Do you have anything else? No, I do not. Thank okay, you. Okay, let's move on then. Thank you. Um, okay, so we're um, on to the approval of minutes. Are there any changes uh, to the minutes? We had May 11th minutes, and we also had May 25th minutes. So if you take a look there. So let's go with May 11th first. Um, any changes to May 11th? No. Motion to approve. Uh, let, me, let me ask real quick. Any, anybody, any changes from the public? Okay, motion to approve. Anybody want a second? Second. We have a second, Mr. Councilmember Sorrell. Uh, City Clerk, will you please call the roll for the May 11th minutes? Yeah, we don't call roll for Oh, that's right. Oh, we just submitted this. Okay, so May 25th, any changes? Nope. Okay. Motion to approve May 25th. <coughs> okay, approved. Uh, item submitted by Mayor. That would be me. That would be you. Yeah. So I, um, I don't need to come down for this particular one. I will be down in a minute. But we have the most amazing man here in our presence. And he lights up a room and lights up a conversation. And I always enjoy him. Um, I actually called him a few weeks ago and said, please tell me a secret. Where are we on our property values? And he was so close, it was scary. But I'm going to let our property appraiser, Marty Kerr, tell you all about it. Thank you. Hello, everybody. By the way, I have to tell you, that was awesome. Can you give those kids another round of applause? Yeah. Oh, thank you. That made my day, and I have to tell you, there are so many reasons why I love being a plantation resident, but to see uh, young people like that, uh, to be able to come up to see what they're doing, and uh, to see that our city commission is actually highlighting the great work they're doing, I think is awesome, and it's really a testament to what I think is one of the greatest cities in Broward County to live in. You know he recorded that, right? Absolutely. Oh, no, I, I love it. As you know, I moved here in 2016. I've lived in Broward County my entire life, and since I represent everybody, I love all of our 31 cities equally. Uh, but I have to tell you, living here, he said this 31 times. I did, yeah. absolutely. But living here is awesome. We're right in the center of the county. It's been just a great place to raise my young family. Uh, my wife and I have so many places to go on dates, and restaurants. We love Central Park, pickleball. Everything about it is great. And honestly, a lot of that is really a testament, I think, to the great work that this council does for the people of Plantation. So thank you all so much for that. And uh, thank you for inviting me, Madam Mayor. Uh, I have to tell you, as you know, uh, you know, plantation is growing pretty quickly, and property values are skyrocketing here for a number of different reasons. Uh, but before I talk about that and the market value and the taxable value, for the residents, I was just quickly hoping to talk about how our office can help them, especially during this time. You know, there are three main functions to our office. The first function is we determine the value of every piece of property in Broward County for tax purposes, whether it's residential, commercial, tangible, personal property, or centrally assessed property, which are railroads. And the reason that's important is because when our resident pays their property taxes, the amount of taxes they pay is the relationship between the value of the property that we set and the tax rate set by the city commission, the school board, the county commission, and all other taxing authorities. And what we want to make sure is that we get it right. Broward County is a big place. More people live here than 13 states, the District of Columbia, and all U.S. territories except Puerto Rico, and there are more parcels that we appraise than many states. And Plantation is a very big city with lots of parcels. And if any resident goes on our website right now at bcpa.net or our more mobile-friendly website, which is web.bcpa.net, they can type in their name, their address, and they can look at their property record card, and they can see what we have as the value of their property for tax purposes. And that's going to be the value we're going to use uh, that's going to determine the amount of property taxes they're going to pay in November. So if anybody has any concerns concerned with that, they can contact me by September 19th of this year so we can go through it together. And I know later on I'll probably get a phone call or tomorrow I'll get a phone call or an email. And somebody will go on there and they'll look at their value. And they'll call me and they'll say, Marty, I think my value is too high. And they'll tell me, well, you know, and I understand why you made that value, because you based that on all the comparable sales that were similar to mine that sold the year before. But my property is different. It's dilapidated. It has water damage. There's something that makes it less valuable than those other properties. And I'll say, well, show me what you got. And if they have information that can let me bring down the value of their property, which could bring, bring down the amount of property taxes they pay, we always will. So please, everybody, contact me by September 19th of this year so we can work on your property together to make sure you only pay on your fair share of value. The second thing that we do 
And this is what I love most about my job is we give tax saving exemptions to folks that qualify. And there are a lot of exemptions under Florida law. The most important one by far is the homestead exemption. If somebody has made plantation their primary residence and they lived here on January 1st of this year, they're entitled to a homestead exemption. It does two things. The first thing it does, it takes $50,000 of value off the tax rate and no longer pay taxes on, can save them maybe 800, 900, possibly 1,000 bucks a year at the beginning, but it really protects them going forward. Because once you get that homestead exemption, it basically means that the value of your tax in every year cannot go up more than a maximum of 3%. And right now that is so very important because property values, especially residential properties and plantation, are going up 20, 25%, maybe 30, 35%. But if you have a homestead exemption, the value of your tax line can't go up on more than 3%. So it keeps your assessed value manageable. So your assessed value won't skyrocket with your market value, which can make your property taxes skyrocket. So if there's any resident plantation listening that lived in their property on January 1st of this year, you, if you don't have a homestead exemption, call me, contact me, email me by September 19th of this year, and we'll apply it so we can make sure that you only pay on your fair share of taxes. Once you get that exemption, there are so many other exemptions. There are exemptions for seniors and for veteran, veterans, for people who are widows or widowers or have disabilities. And I always tell everybody, go on our website at bcpa.net, click on exemptions, and if there's something you're not getting, again, you can contact me by September 19th, and we'll make sure it's applied so they're reflected in your tax bill. The last thing that we do, and this is just as important, and I like to bring this up because I think it's important for the residents to hear this as well, is when somebody's entitled to an exemption, they should get it. They've earned it under the Constitution. Conversely, if somebody is frauding the system, and they're knowingly frauding the system, and they are getting an illegal exemption, that means they're paying less in their taxes than they, than they should, and it makes everybody else pay more, or brings less money into the city so you can provide great services to the people of, of plantation. And so we also have a very aggressive fraud division that goes throughout the county every single day, and it cracks down on people who are intentionally frauding the system and not playing by the rules. And I always tell everybody, please don't fraud the system, because if you do, we're going to find out. And I what saw we're, that picture. It's true. And uh, what we'll do is we'll take away your illegal exemption. We'll back tax you up to 10 years, include a 50% penalty and 15% interest. It can be hefty, but it's hefty because people should not be able to break the law. Uh, the other thing I wanted to quickly bring up before I talked about property values is just something that I think is exceptionally important uh, it's for all the people who own property in Broward County. You know, unfortunately, South Florida is the title fraud capital of the world. You have criminals, and what these criminals do is they file fake deeds on people's properties, and they take these deeds and they try to extort people for money or mortgage rent or even sell their property. They do some terrible things to innocent people, and it happens all the time in South Florida. And the reason being is because the recording division for every single county have just a ministerial duty. They have to accept whatever document is filed with them. So you have criminals and fraudsters. They'll go in there, they'll file fake deeds, and then they'll do something nefarious with it. And so about a year ago, we came up with a great program that we developed in-house. We spent no taxpayer dollars doing it, and it's free to the public, and it's called Owner Alert. And it's basically a notification system so you can know if a document has been filed changing ownership in your property. So if any plantation resident wants to sign up, if you just go to our website at web.bcpa.net or bcpa.net, you can click on Owner Alert, and you can type in your name, you can type in your address, and you can also type in your email. And if we have your email on file, you're automatically verified. If we don't, we ask you to upload your driver's license or your Florida ID. If you don't have that, there are other ways to get verified as well. And then if any document is filed changing ownership of your property, legitimate or not, you'll be notified instantaneously so you can fight the fraud before the fraud occurred. We've had about 180,000 Broward County property owners sign up so far, and it's my goal to get every single Broward County property owner to sign up because it's really there to protect their most important asset, which is their home. And the other thing that we're doing in our office, and I really wanted to bring this up to the people of Plantation because I think it's important. It's been a crusade of mine this past year to really crack down on these criminals. And so we've actually uh, have allowed our fraud division to move away from just uh, investigating homestead fraud, but also to work with law enforcement to create cases so that we can put some of these people behind bars. And we're actually successful in working with the Southern District of New York in uh, prosecuting and convicting uh, two people who stole $12 million of properties in Broward County. We're also successful recently in working up a case and working with the United States Attorney for the Southern District of Florida, where two people are about to go to jail for a very long time for stealing 40 properties in Broward County. And recently, we worked with the Broward Sheriff's Office, where we were able to uh, have two people arrested uh, who stole two properties in Cooper City. And we actually just put more charges on them by working with the Fort Lauderdale Police Department, because this one really bothered me. They uh, stole a property from a 68-year-old disabled person uh, who was confined to a wheelchair. And it's my goal to let all these people know that they're not welcome here in Broward County. And if you try to do this, we're going to work with law enforcement to put you in jail for a very long time. And so, oh, thank you.
And so if anybody gets an alert that their property has been is being defrauded, if there was a fake deed filed, if there's somebody that's trying to take advantage of them, please call our office because we're going to be there to try to help you and protect you in that difficult time. Uh, with that said, uh, the numbers in plantation right now are pretty incredible. And I know we submitted them on June 1st, but I really wanted to go through them with you just because I think it's pretty amazing what's happening in Broward County. Now, if you took the market value in 2021 and you sold it all on the open market, that's all the residents residential and commercial property. In 2021, you would have got implantation about $14.66 billion. Fast forward to 2022, you would get about $16.95 billion. That's a 15.59% increase in market value alone. That's a pretty incredible number in just one year. Now, if you look at the taxable value, that's the value that you're going to be utilizing. We need to determine the millage rate you're going to set on that value to determine the amount of money that you're going to bring in to provide great services to the residents of uh, plantation. And in 2021, the taxable value was approximately $10,542,000. This year, there has been a 10.03% uh, increase in taxable value to about $11,600,000, uh, $600 million. So what that means, if you keep your millage rate the same, which is right about 5.8, that's the operating millage rate, the additional revenue that you'll bring in will be right about $6.135 million more this year than last year. There are also uh, two development districts in the city of Plantation, and both development districts saw significant increases this year based on new construction. And in 2021, the taxable value for the Plantation Gateway 7 development district was right about $326.7 million. Fast forward to 2022, there's been a 30.24% increase to about $425 uh, million million dollars and really that was the result of a massive project called Windsor 335. Uh, if you keep the millage rate the same which is 1.9160 you'll get an additional revenue of $189,000 more this year than last year and you also have the Plantation Midtown Development District. In 2021 the taxable value was right about $1.5 billion. Uh, in 2022 the taxable value rose about 15% to about $1.79 billion. If you keep the millage rate the same that'll bring an additional $231,000 more this year than last year, and it's just very important to note that even though values are rising significantly, the vast majority of residential property owners in Plantation are homesteaded, and what's great about that is their market value is skyrocketing, but their assessed value that their tax on is capped at 3%, so really this big increase in value is being uh, driven by new construction and lots of people moving from all over the world to Plantation and making it their home. The... Uh, there are there's $222 million of new construction. Uh, you have 21,722 homestead exemptions here in Plantation. You have 1,012 uh, long-term or, or senior exemptions, and you have 162 long-term senior exemptions. I just want to bring that up real fast because I'm so proud of my uh, council for actually adopting this. And I'll tell you why. Not every city in Broward County has adopted the long-term senior exemption. And to qualify, not many people qualify. You have to be 65 or older. You have you have to have made last year under $32,561. You had to have been in your home for more than 25 years, and the value of your home has to be under $250,000. So the, it's a pretty high threshold to be able to meet to qualify. But the people that do qualify for it get to save a lot of money. And because only 162 people qualify for it in plantation, it's a drop in the bucket to the budget loss that you're getting. But to those seniors who struggle every single day to make ends meet, that's a lot of money they can put in their pocket and they can live a better life. I was so proud of plantation for passing that. I think it's great. And I hope that every single city in Broward County follows plantation's lead on that. You also have 1,855 widows who have an exemption. And you also have 154 totally permanently disabled American hero veterans who pay no property taxes to plantation. Uh, the average single family home in plantation, the market value right now is about $504,000 and the average taxable value is about $288,000. You have uh, 8,955 condominium parcels with an average market value of $167,000 and an average taxable value of $104,000. I know I threw a lot of information at you, but I've had five cups of coffee, two Red Bulls and a Diet Coke, so I'm a little wired. Uh, but uh, with that said, is there anything that I can ask, uh, answer Mr. President? Marty, you're like that not on coffee. Oh, yeah, thanks. Yes. <laughs> Marty, what do you, just like about, about 15 words ago, what did you say the average sure. regular single family home in? Sure. The, it is the average, uh, right now, the average uh, market value of a single family home in plantation is $504,776. That's the average. That's the average. 
and the taxable value uh, is 288000 Now, what that shows is a few things. The reason that the market value is so much higher than the taxable value, it just shows that people do not like to leave plantation. Once you get here, you realize how wonderful it is, like me, and you basically stay forever. And so uh, that's why uh, the taxable value is so low, but the market value is so very high. Definitely. Thank Great question. Senior exemption, they pay nothing, right? Uh, it depends. Great question. And uh, so basically there are two different senior exemptions. Uh, one senior exemption uh, pertains to all seniors who are 65 and over right. who made under $32,561 last year. They basically get an additional homestead exemption right. uh, for their property. But the long-term senior exemption... 162 people got... Right. The so long-term senior exemption, they pay no property taxes to the city of Plantation right. or to the county commission. They have to pay the school board taxes, though. That's a great question, and again, thank you all so much for adopting that. Thank you, Nick. So, you all are awesome. Thank you guys so much. So, you're home before dinner. I am. Actually, I'm very excited. Uh, my youngest, I am. So, I have, uh, I have two daughters, as you know, they're 12 and 9, and I found out recently that my 12-year-old won her student council election, which is great. And so, thank you. I appreciate it. And so... Is to, so, uh, we, well, you know, actually, I was very proud of her. She grassrooted it. She asked all the kids for their votes. She was going, you know, she, I was really proud of that. It was kind of like, you know, when we're campaigning, you sneak into, like, gated communities, things of that nature. She was sneaking into classrooms, doing all kinds of stuff. And, uh, but I'm so proud because right now, in my mind, she's 12. I've been planning her election from student council to president of the United States in my mind. So I've been going through it. But we're actually going to celebrate tonight, so I'm heading over there. But thank you all so very much, and thank you all very much. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Madam Mayor. The owner work website, Marty, was that um, BC, bcpa.net? Yes. If uh, the easiest way to do it, and thank you for that question, it's uh, webweb.bcpa.net web slash owner alert. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Bye, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Marty, Marty if, they don't, if they just go to the site, though, oh, yes. they, there's, there's probably a, a click that they could click for the owner alert, right? They could find it on the site if they don't remember the other part of it. Oh, there is. Um, so the easiest way to do it, and I probably should have said this before, I said lots of caffeine in me. Uh, if you go to bcpa.net, uh, that's just our website. There's a big button there that says owner alert, and I really appreciate everybody signing up. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. Next up is Parks and Rec, um, Lewis and uh, Mr. Goodrich have a presentation. You can take the, the mic if you wish. Oh, All right. Okay. Fantastic. Good evening, everybody. Mayor, um, Council President uh, Anderson, Council Members. Uh, my name is Louis Reinstein. I am the chair of the Plantation Parks and Recreation Foundation. I am here with uh, officers from the foundation, Samantha Fitzgerald, uh, Guy Strom, and uh, Kevin Sobolewski can't be here today. Uh, but we're very excited um, to present to the city council and to the, the members of the public uh, this very first check from the foundation. Uh, we just started a number of months ago, and we held our first golf tournament after three months of being in existence. And with the help of many members of the council, many members of the public, uh, we got sponsors, we got uh, members to play. Council member Fagin played. Uh, and uh, yes, I won't comment how he played, but it was great to see. It was great for him to be there. <laughs> <laughs> Always, everybody. Uh, so we, we held the golf tournament at Plantation Preserve. It was great to be at our very own golf course, Plantation's Golf Course, Plantation Preserve. And uh, with the assistance of lots of volunteers, uh, with lots of help from um, Director Goodrich from the Plantation Parks and Recreation uh, Department, as well as uh, Trish O'Toole and other volunteers, we we raised some funds, and we raised some funds that we're here to present. Um, we have this check here, if you'll unmask the check. Yes. 
show it to the show it to the public. It's sixteen thousand um, dollars. And just just a word uh, about uh, the direction of the check. Uh, you can see on it that it says for Parks and Recreation Department and shade at Pop Travers Park. Uh, one of the things that uh, the foundation has done is that it's spoken to the members of the public. And, uh, and the public has, has uh, loudly made clear that there are some things that they really would like to see done in our city that the city just hasn't been able to get to yet. Uh, the city has a, a wonderful budget, um, lots of things that it's taken care of in our city to make our parks wonderful and, and as green as can be. But one of the things that um, a lot of residents wanted was some further shade at Pop Travers. And we heard them and we said, you know what, this is where we're going to direct these first group of funds and we're going to request that the city directs those funds there. Um, the, the check goes to the city of Plantation, but our, our request, Mayor, is that uh, it goes towards the Parks and Recreation Department and towards Pop Travers. So we hope that, uh, that that will be possible. And then we hope that the city will be able to furnish the remaining funds that are necessary for all the shade at Pop Travers. Is it shade at the park or the ball fields? Uh, by the ball fields. The dugouts or? Um, we're going to, right. by the bleachers. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Any, any, any questions? Just, and that's from, that's just from the golf tournament? This yeah. is just from the golf tournament. And, and, and just repeat for the public, because this is a brand new foundation. This is, we didn't have it in existence before. Just no, the, the foundation's been around, uh, we're, we're about six months, give or take. Um, and we put on the golf tournament within about three months. Um, Kevin Soboleski, who, who couldn't be here today, he was the chair of the golf tournament, um, and with the help of, uh, of the director and many others, uh, got it off. And um, it was really amazing. But, you know, what I'd like the residents to know is that uh, this is a charitable organization. This is a foundation. And so for people who want to um, make a charitable donation, um, want to help the city, want to be a part of making the city as best as it can be, they can make a donation to the foundation. And uh, as the foundation um, holds additional fundraisers, we're going to be doing this as often as we can. So this is the first time we're here before you. This is the first check. We hope it's going to be the first of many. Uh, One other thing real quick for those who care about parks, uh, Lewis served on the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board. That board meets to talk about things to make the parks better, and if I am correct, they're meeting Tuesday the 28th. So uh, I'll, I'll be on plantation.org for people who want to have input about the parks and what they like and what they don't like. Thank and you, Council Member, for that. mentioning that. Um, you know, serving on the Parks and Rec Advisory Board, which is a city advisory board, is a great way to be involved. Um, but if people want to serve and, and be a part of committees for the foundation, um, we also need lots of volunteers. So when we have these fundraisers, uh, they don't happen with just the officers alone. Um, we need volunteers. So if you want to be a part of this, uh, it's not just about the fundraising, although the fundraising is necessary, but we need the people power too. Perfect. Nice. Thank you. When I became mayor three and a half years ago, um, Director Goodrich came to me with this idea of the foundation and kept talking about it. I kept saying, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. And finally one day I said, the man you need to call is Louis Reinstein. And he will help you put the papers together and everything there. And we were all on the same page. You know, Plantation has one of the highest volunteer rates in the state. So kudos to all of you. <laughs> and again, they finally got formalized, got the board together. And uh, we were already budgeting those um, covers for Pop Travers, so thank you very much for the money. Um, we'll find something else to do with parks. He always has a list. He's got a long list. He has a <laughs> long list. But, you know, the Parks and Recreation Department is the center of the city, so to speak. There is more participation and net return on every investment we make in Parks and Rec. Every park is, is attended all the time, and everybody has great programs. So we're thrilled that you're both on, you're my appointment on the Parks and Rec Board, and um, 
that you're here with this foundation. I know all of you, and for those of you that don't know Kevin, he's a go-getter. And um, this board will be extremely successful. And I can't say thank you enough. You did a great job, all of you. Thank you for your support. Thank you. Oh, oh, that's right. That's, no. Thank you. No, no, no. Real quick, I just would like to say a special thank you to Lewis and the rest of the board. Um, again, it's it's a challenging thing, and obviously, I brought to them this idea and said we need to do these things and we can make an impact. Uh, we obviously uh, have our budgets that we work with and our capital budgets, but every little piece that we can do a little bit more to make this uh, a better city, we want to try and do that. So it was a mission of mine, and I'm, I'm so glad that we've got this group together, and what a great start. So I like the thought of many, many more come, coming, too. So thank you again. President Anderson. Um, I was going to say earlier before the Parks and Rec Foundation leaves, there's an African proverb I always love to quote, if you want to go fast, you go alone. If you want to go far, you bring others with you. They have gone fast and far. <laughs> so I really applaud the work that they're doing and look forward to it continuing. And however we can support, you have our support. I am honored today to be able to recognize someone in our community who has given so much for so many years. If you can please come up and join me, Mr. Fernandez and his lovely wife, and also Dr. Navarro, who was really the glue, right, the link. She is the Vice President of Government Affairs at Memorial Healthcare Systems. The proclamation reads as follows, whereas Ariello Fernandez has been a healthcare professional for over 40 years in the Tri-County area, although he only looks like 25, <laughs> whereas he has served as the Chief Executive Officer for Memorial Hospital in Miramar for over six years, and whereas he has served on numerous organizations, including the Board of Directors of Catholic Health Services and the Florida Hospital Association. And whereas he was recognized by the Boy Scouts of America South Florida Council Citizen of the Year Broward County Award. And whereas he was born in Havana, Cuba, and has lived in South Florida for the past 55 years, and is a resident of Plantation with his wife and four sons. And whereas he earned his bachelor's degree in business administration and master's of health services administration from Florida International University. And whereas he is a fellow in the American College of Healthcare Executives. And he was appointed by the governor to serve on the Transition Advisory Committee for Health and Wellness. And whereas we congratulate Mr. Fernandez III on his tireless service to our community for over four decades and wish him all the best on his retirement. Lynn Stoner, Mayor of City of Plantation and the Council do proclaim today as Ariolio Fernandez III Day. Thank you so much. It probably goes without saying, but everybody has experienced this pandemic in different ways and is still experiencing this pandemic. So for all of our healthcare workers, I really cannot express to you how much we appreciate all of you. 
We love you. The sacrifices that you all have made personally and professionally to take care of our community, we can never, we can never thank you enough. Thank so you. we so appreciate you. I'd like to share with the council members and the audience today the, how special it is to have the new healthcare system here in South Florida. It is what I consider the finest healthcare system. Definitely South Florida, probably one of the best in the state of Florida. But what we went through during the last two years for the pandemic, and because we're so close to Miami-Dade County, we had a disproportionate number of COVID positive patients going to our facilities, significantly higher. We cared for more COVID patients than anyone else in Broward County, and if you do it by hospitals, anywhere else in South Florida. And it's a credit to the heroes that we had because we never, ever were able not to provide the appropriate PPEs. We never had a layoff. We never had cut salaries. We never uh, cut away the evaluations every year. So the commitment to the heroes that were in the front lines was never compromised. And that's the kind of organizations you have here in your backyard. And I appreciate this recognition because this goes with 14,000 other heroes that work in the Memorial Healthcare System. Thank you very much. And I told him he's not really retiring because as the mayor said, we expect him to volunteer in the city because now he'll have more free time. So uh, we'll be calling on you. <laughs> Councilmember Fajan, and you going to? Yes, I wouldn't miss this for anything. <laughs> so the infamous Mr. D. you're not here for the consent agenda. So. <laughs> um, invited Mario and Mary Evasian, the owners of Mr. D's Pizza, because they're celebrating a, a, a big milestone this year. It's their 50th year of Mr. D's. <laughs> so, extraordinary and everything he does in the community, and married. So here's the proclamation. Whereas Morty Dinkin, the original owner of Mr. D's Pizza, opened its doors for business in 1972 on Old Peters Road 50 years ago this year, and whereas in 1974, Billy Delgrasso uh, bought Mr. D's Pizza from Mr. Dinkin, and whereas in 1980, Mario Avazian was driving by Mr. D's Pizza seeing a sign advertising for a once a week delivery driver, and from there, Mario became a can-do employee, cleaning, food prep, cooking all the way to being promoted to manager. And whereas in 1986, Mario Vazian and his best friend Jude Elmer, pursuing a lifelong dream of owning a business together, bought Mr. D's uh, pizza from Mr. Del Grasso and operated the business together until Mr. Elmer's passing in 2000. And whereas also in 1986, Mary Avazian, Mario's wife, took over the back room and bookkeeping duties because it was quickly determined that Mario and Jude were not good accountants. <laughs> <laughs> whereas all the food made from scratch and in-house creating multiple generations of fans, whereas it is estimated that over the last 50 years, Mr. D's Pizza has served over 1 million lunches and dinners to families, churches, schools, first responders, and if you're a high school kid growing up in a city, there's no better deal than a two pizza breads and a can of soda. <laughs> And whereas, if you had an organization like South Plantation High School Theater Program, I didn't know they were going to be here. Yes. <laughs> I'll say that again. South Plantation High School Theater Program, 
No, just once? All right. <laughs> Athletic team, newspaper, yearbook, or church that needed a discount pizza to sell at a fundraiser, or a person down on their luck looking for a free slice, Mr. D's pizza never turned, them back, turned their back. And whereas over the last 50 years, Mr. D's pizza has survived multiple economic downturns, national tragedies, natural disasters, and pandemics to be beloved institution of the city of Plantation. Now, therefore, I, Lynn Stoner, mayor and the city council of Plantation, Florida, do hereby proclaim June 8, 2022 as Mr. D's Pizza Day. of the people that are here. We have representing the police department um, and um, our fire department, yes, and a lot of our uh, uh, city attorneys are out in the back that use, that go to you. I know Danny Polio from uh, the uh, utilities director is there. My son is here. They go to you all the time. And um, who else is here from? Oh, oh, that's right. You're right there too, Mr. Goodrich from Parks and Rec. So, the city loves you too. <laughs> You're not going to be uh, yeah, uh, something. Here, come on. Right, first of all, you got to have to go in for the microphone. Oh, really? But then i got to look at you guys instead of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Try. I can look at you guys. <laughs> Listen, thank you guys, everybody. If I started thanking people individually, yeah. I'd be here quite some time. But a great turnout, the theater program, everybody over here. It started out, like he said, with Morty Dinkin. And Billy Doug Russell gave me the opportunity in 80 to buy it. And then I got four of the best people in the world working for me, plus a bunch of others. Jude, my business partner who passed away. Uh, all right, so let me go with the four people that work for me. Tony, Chris, Sam, and Eric, who have been with me over, over 10 years, which is huge. Thank you very much. Uh, the chief of police, Howard Harrison, who used to come in with his girlfriend to get lunches when he was at South Plantation High School. Donnie Todd, when he came yep. in there. And, and, and then, uh, uh, what, what's his name, Mr. Donnie He's Todd? He's getting old. Phil Goodrich. Phil, Phil Goodrich, whose sister delivered mail at Mr. D's for the longest, longest time. Like that. You know, and it goes on and on. And Dr. Bob, thanks for coming in, buddy. I love you. And then Mr. Sunbuck and Richard Kirby and everybody else. Like I said, and then Kendrick Gomez, naturally, he's a staple over there. Uh, 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 Jim Ray, who had the body shop behind. I look at people, I'm thinking, everybody over here, if I forgot somebody, I'm sorry. Thank you guys so much. Obviously, this is the guy that's in charge of all of the green signs, by the way. <laughs> and he's all over What did I forget? Just stand up and, and, and recognize yourselves. Thank you, guys. Mr. C, who's going to help me fix my boat, I hope. Uh, thank you, guys. Thank you. All right, let's all uh, climb in together. Do you together. remember what everybody orders? <laughs> I used to. I used to. That's how he's, when he used to come in and say, oh, oh, that was the ham and you're cheese guy. guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think your calzone is the best. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. We'll eat that. Eggplant. No. Pizza <laughs> bread. <My>, yeah. <laughs> and Daly, what a great job. Daly's mom got a PhD, by the way. Congratulations. <laughs> 
Right. And, and wasn't the Marty Cole's mom was the principal at one of my kids' schools way, way back in the day? Davis. Yeah. Yes. She was. She was. She was. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now you want to get the meeting today? Yeah. Do we no. have a meeting? No. Uh, Mr. Anderson. Mr. How do you think of Mr. Anderson and Nick Shore and everybody else? I tried to forget Mr. And Anderson. Mr. Tadjan. <laughs> what a great guy. Yeah. Honest to God. Genuine as could be. Right? This super. The principal of Tropical for many, many years. They still order for me. I get about 75 pizzas just to try them because they today alone for the end of the school year. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to thank Tim, especially our accountant. <laughs> <laughs> we pay him. <laughs> Not in food, actual money. Sometimes in food. So it's a little food. But working. this was his idea, and he went to the mayor, and the mayor said, yes. Of course. And so he wrote this whole thing. <laughs> One last thing before I forget, I can't forget my wife Mary, who without her the business would have folded many, many years ago. I am not her. It was a tie-dye theme, one of okay. my friends suggested. You're a deadhead, yeah. yeah. He's colorblind, so that's his favorite concert. 1974 was my first concert. First yeah. okay. I've been in Jerry's ice cream, that's all I <laughs> so, Thank you for good. coming, everybody. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Chair, not to the mayor or individual, individual members of the council. Kindly keep your remarks to the allotted three minutes. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are you all today? We're great after all that. Yeah, that was fabulous. Mario is a wonderful human being. Um, thank you very much for all the support that I've enjoyed. Keeping plantation as clean as possible. If you get a chance to drive through the neighborhood by Seminole Middle School and South Plantation and Tropical, there's definitely a difference. I only have one request. 
And is that if you could consider Jack Carter Harmony Park across from South Plantation High School, it is litter central. There are zero trash cans. If there is a possibility of maybe putting please don't litter on a trash can or just a couple trash cans by the benches and the seats, I have to bring an extra bag just to pick up the trash there daily. If that was a possibility, it would be awesome. That's all I got. So you want us to put our signs or you want us to put your signs? I am more than, I have put mine there many times and it's not acceptable to the city so they are removed, which is completely understandable, but maybe you could supply a trash can or two. And maybe those trash cans could have some kind of lead in the bottom so they didn't get tipped over. I, the metal, you can get the metal mesh kind whatever of you guys uh, think is correct saying also suggest maybe to put the sticker a sticker on the page. it might be a great idea or you could have free signs from me whatever you would prefer right. <laughs> but that park is like a little issue god bless you all thank you can i get a name, name and address for the record please yes mr strauss yes thank you strauss. Michael Strassel, 6141 Southwest 16th Street, Plantation, Florida, 33317. Any other comments to the, any uh, comments, or requests, come on, Mrs. Ms. Gelfin? Vicki Galpin, 9381 Northwest 18th Place, Plantation. Good evening, and just so you don't forget, I'm here to say I'm still against the project plan for 8601 Sunrise Boulevard. Again, thank you for the many members of the council and, their, and the staff of the city for giving me accurate information regarding this development. When I suggested that they build luxury townhomes on the property, people were aghast and against it. They said, and I quote, Young professionals don't want to buy anything they'd rather rent. Hate to say it, but I do believe those naysayers are wrong. I was up in Boca Raton last week and saw several new communities that are being built. Some were one- and two-story single-family homes, and some were one-story villas and two-story townhomes. I asked several people, who would want to buy these homes now? Well, I was shocked to hear that their young professionals are those people. And they're not homes in the four hundred to six hundred thousand dollar range. They start at seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars and go up from there. And who's buying them? <gasps> young professionals, and I mean young. They're in their thirties and early forties, and they're starting their families. People in plantation have said that we need to get the city to attract the younger generation. I'm in total agreement there. I'm one of the older generation, and I see it in my community also. Single-family homes where I live are going for over $500,000, which is a shock to me. And who's buying them? Young professionals, young couples who are now having babies, the future generation of plantation residents. Why doesn't this city start thinking younger? You want to encourage younger people, so why not encourage the developers of 8601 to think younger? Not with rentals, but with luxury townhomes or single-family homes. Less crowded, and if they can build homes for younger people in Boca, why can't they do it here? Another project that I can't understand why it's even thinking of being built is the public store that will be taking over the Barnes & Noble property. I know the Publix is probably worried that one in ten people will shop at another food store and they need to get their footprint all over the city. But seriously, three blocks from another Publix? And how much parking will that new store have? That will be an interesting situation to keep an eye on. Has anyone tried to find another location for the Browns and Barnes and Noble to lo relocate to? Chewy is relocating the plantation. Why not give Barnes and Noble some of the incentive to stay in our city like Chewy got? Am I still one of the few that still likes to read an actual book? My request for the council is to try and help Barnes and Noble relocate within our city with incentives that were offered to Chewy. I appreciate you allowing me and other members of the city to speak and let you know how we feel. I only wish that there were more people that would realize that voting for city council members takes only a few minutes every few years. It's the time between elections that the residents need to keep up with, with what is going on. For those that just vote and go home, don't be complaining when nothing gets done or posting on Facebook all the things that you could have learned by showing up here or watching on a Zoom call. I did. 
Now it's your turn. Before you vote in November, check out what each candidate has done or what they promise they will do. Ask questions, do a little research. This is your city and your future here. Then you can make an informed decision before you mark your ballots. Thank you and good night. Thank you. Any other comments of the council in person? I see we have one online, we have another one in person. We will. Granny girl. Good evening. Ginger Baker, 11601 Northwest 4th Street, Plantation. And I understand that it's you guys who make up some of the rules for code enforcement to enforce. And I am after getting storm shutters removed after a hurricane within a reasonable time. 30 days, 45 days, give people time because you know some of us old fogies, it takes us a little longer to get things down. But I am living across the street from a house that has had shutters all the way around since Wilma. Wilma. And Wilma. Wilma like 15 years ago? <laughs> Longer. Yes, sir. But they're there. And there's other places, same thing. But I think there should be an ordinance. So if you guys can do something, appreciate it. Thank you. Council Member, uh, President Anderson. Go ahead. Um, can we ask if staff has looked at that or addressed it? I'm sure we know about the property, and I, and this is, uh, Jason. This is a frustration you have all the time. I know, it was negligent, Lori. Sorry, sorry. Uh, yes, sir. Jason Unamaker, CAO. Yeah. This issue has come up before. There's a, there are building guidelines associated with it. I know we've enforced it in the past. So, uh, I'd be happy if 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 they make that request through code enforcement or administration. We'll check it out and follow up on it. Absolutely. Ginger, has the police heard from you about this? Okay. That, that's, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm okay. Better. That's why I want to work it out now to see what the story is. So I'd like to know. Um, Chief has I'd a like quizzical to, look. I'd like to research what, yeah. if, if staff could get back to us, what, what, what there is, Jason. I know it's a major hazard, uh, fire hazard. If there were a fire, you can't yeah. have other means of egress to get can out I or fire to get in. I'm sorry. Can I approach you to give yeah. you this? Um, the related, okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we have a frustration in every neighborhood. It seems like there's one home, and Jason and administration, you guys tear your hair out at that one home that doesn't comply, and we try to do many things with magistrate and everything, and it's frustrating. Um, I'm not saying as eloquently as you guys can, but it's just the point is, if there's a city like this, usually administration, everybody knows about it, and... Go ahead, Mayor. So uh, when I was on council, uh, we tried to do this ordinance and give them so many days to take everything off. And as we saw um, last year, I believe, with the fire department, that impeded that particular gentleman's rescue. Yes. And he couldn't get in and everything. At the time, though, we were told that the county had an ordinance and they didn't want to cross over into the county. Well, we can't enforce the, the county rules, so we actually need to go back and do our own. And so we will put that on the list of things to do, especially with um, the storm season coming up. I see that quite a bit, and um, I, I no longer keep a pencil and pad next to me to write down all the violations that I see. Um, but that is one that does concern me strictly for the access of the fire department to save someone. You certainly want that to happen. So if you'll be kind enough to give, uh, well, you gave her your card, please call him with the address and we'll be happy to look at it, but we'll be happy to look at the existing ordinances and bring that back to council. Mayor, since we, we went on that tangent, are, can we also, in the meantime, can they contact Broward County to be enforcing that? Is that what you were saying? Um, I don't know that the county will cross over into our jurisdiction either. So there's a, everybody sort of feels like they have their own 
jurisdiction. So, so you're saying we basically need to write, basically create our own so we can yes, enforce our own? Yes, absolutely. So then I'd like to make that a priority because. Yes. We'll be happy to do that. Okay. Good evening. My name is Rosemary Johnson. My address is 7148 East Tropical Way and Plantation. I am the landscape chairperson for Hawthorne Village. We are a small community adjacent to the plantation, golf, and preserve. We have 52 homes and we cover almost 12 acres of land. Every year we approach the city to have pre-hurricane tree trimming done. We, uh, we actually fill out all the documents. In the past, I'm going to give you a little history. Uh, I would take it to the city, I would pay the fee for the permit with my documents, and they would give me that permit that day, and I would leave and schedule the work to be done. This year, in April, I took the documents to the city and was told the landscaping department is no longer there, it's part of public works, that I would have to take the documents over to 92nd, I believe, in Cleary. I took them over there and they said, well, I'm sorry, there's nobody in the landscaping department. You have to make an appointment. I said, can I just leave the documents here? Nope, you have to make an appointment. I said, well, I'll leave my telephone number. Somebody could call me. I did. I got a call from um, the gentleman, I guess, this head of the landscaping department. In delay. And yes, Mr. Brown. And he indicated, did I have the new form to fill out? And I said, I wasn't aware that there was one. Anyway, I filled out the new form. It's uh, additional documents that I needed. And I took that over to him, made the appointment, took it over, dropped it off. Uh, I asked how long it would take. They said, uh, two weeks to a month. What? So I said, well, we'll be in hurricane season by that time. So um, I said, why is it taking so long to get the documents? He really couldn't give me an answer for that, but I did all our diligence to get everything done. Today, I get a call after I filled out all the documents saying that I needed to have every species of tree being trimmed. We have 73 trees. I have 50 palms. I would have to give them the name of each species and the location. We have 12 acres. I have over 100 and some trees that need to be trimmed. I said, why are you making it so difficult for people? Plus, they're charging you per tree per palm and requiring to I mean, have... You're just trimming, correct? Yes, pre-hurricane. We're not taking anything out. And we've always hired someone that is licensed, insured, has all the documents. So what's your status right this minute? Do you have a permit? You have no. A permit? Okay. This is yeah. Mr. Rogers. He's the director of public works. Okay. And he will work this out. I'm sorry you've been so, so inconvenienced. Um, that's not how we operate. So, of course, Mr. Rogers will look back at his department. But if you would communicate directly with him, I'm sure he'll solve your problem very quickly. Oh, I appreciate it. But is this going to be the requirement? Do we I know. know. I mean, staff. if you look at that form, it gives you three lines. How in the world would you right. Right. indicate 73 trees and 50 palms? It's it's ludicrous. So I appreciate you. Give me Thank a call. you. We'll get I will. Thank you very much. You want uh, I don't need it. Thank you. Thank you. Didn't I see you up here a few minutes ago? Yeah, but then I know. Uh, so, Lori Bernardi, one one six eight one Northwest Sixth Street, Plantation Acres. I was going to say about the hurricane shutters because when Ginger brought it up, but I was going to say what you said that because there's a house that leaves them up all year long because she goes over to Germany for like two, three years. But we were told what you had said about that the county has a thing, but we were talking with Ms. New Mr. Nunemaker, so he's going to look into it. But the other problem is bulk trash. Bulk trash comes around, and it's like the next day the people start putting out the piles, 
And some of the people on 118th put their bushes that are like sticking out into the street. And then it stays out there until the next month with it. I mean, even in front of the canals where they then put up the signs like, you know, no dumping because the railing's there. Then they put it just past the railing and their house is all the way around the corner. It's, it's really not even their land. It's the city's land. But I was also going to say that even though tonight's been like kind of different with the things, I still learn stuff. <laughs> so thank, thank you for that. And I'll, I'll concede sure. my time since Mr. I forget his name all the time is not here tonight. So I'll, I'll concede it back. To to. Uh, is it? <clears throat> what? Have, he said what did you learn tonight? <laughs> oh, the kids. They were very entertaining, that little girl. And daily I know because her mom's in our women's club. And... Marty can speak faster than I've ever heard him talk, but now I know why, because today was the last day of school, so, and I knew that his daughter won the election, so he had a dinner to go to, but I couldn't keep up with him tonight. <laughs> Remember the old FedEx commercial where if you absolutely, absolutely positively had to be there overnight, the guy that spoke like a mile a minute, that's Marty. <laughs> he uh, gets faster already, and faster. We already have a rule, it's either five days or a week. You can't yeah, there is a rule. Um, the weekend before, yeah. Right, which is and I know we have a new uh, we have a new code lady, but it's like she was like gun ho for like a couple of weeks because people were all complaining that she was like violating everything. And then now I don't think because if she even drove down one road, she would see the piles. I don't know where people get all these piles from because it's like they had a pile, and then as soon as bolt comes around, they have another big pile unless they're letting their gardeners bring stuff from other people's yards again. So what's the answer? Call code enforcement. Um, if they're putting out, you know, basically three or four weeks before, that's... They have to see them do it. Yeah, that's what they said. I even filmed a guy one day putting it over by the canal, and I actually called the, the um, non-emergency police number, and, I, and she says, well, we have to catch them doing it. And I'm like, I'm, I'm sitting, like, a little bit down the street filming them doing it. Lori, we'll take care of it. So I don't... Is it okay if I call you, Lori? Oh, you can call me wherever you want. Yeah. Miss. <laughs> I've been here enough. I'm friends now, right? <laughs> uh, Lori, guess what? You don't have any more time to yield back. Oh, no, they gave me extra. Oh, did they? I can see it the first time. Hi. Madam Mayor, members of the City Council and staff, my name is Mike Brown. I live at 7179 East Tropical Way Plantation. And I'd like to just go back to Mrs. Johnson's comments. Uh, the one thing that she didn't talk about that's been a problem to uh, our area is that uh, one transformer provides all the electric in our area. And the trees, the plantation on the golf course, or plantations trees, um, she had a work order put in to have the tree cut so it quit falling on the transformer. It's happened a number of times. Our electric goes up. So the other day they were in there all working and doing a good job and uh, she walked over and she said, uh, that's the palm right there that the palm frond falls over. He looked at his work order, said it's not on this work order. It's not his fault, obviously. Uh, but it seems a lot like, uh, it sounds like a lot of red tape. It sounds like there's too much red tape, big brother kind of stuff. Uh, and I would hope, uh, because it's not on the work order, they could cut up palm that keeps falling and knocking people's electric out um, and uh, it's nice that you help them but I, it would be nice that they dealt with you like that on a daily basis that the employer and I think they do but uh, we've had problems and uh, I just wanted to make that comment thank you very much thank you. Mm -hmm. attorney Morgan I just wanted to Mike yep. I, I, I can wait to the end of the comments, but I have a comment regarding the hurricane shutters. Um, just to clarify a little bit, the Florida Building Code, Briar County amendments, without reading the entire section, has a 15-day uh, time period for the removal of the shutters. Um, the city obviously has to abide by the Florida Building Code, but we can, our office can work with uh, Jason and staff to make sure that you know we have the proper. Uh, methods in place to in, in enforce those provisions. And if we need to create a section in the code specifically adopting that just so it's clear to the public that that's the... We can enforce it then. Right. We, we can enforce it now, but it, it's it's in another code that the public 
probably doesn't know exists, which is the Florida Building Code Briar County Amendments, which is kind of buried into, you know, technical things. So we can we can work with Jason and staff on that to make it front okay. front and center. You can work with the mayor and staff. <laughs> oh, I thought you already gave him that that oh, no, direction. No, no, no. I'm sorry, Mayor. No, not after you start drafting an ordinance. That needs to come to me first. Of course. Okay. Thank you. Okay. We had we have a member online, um, someone who wishes to comment. I don't, is it Jen Fain? Oh. Yes, I think it's Jen. Jen, she's unmuting you. Be ready. She's coming up to you. I'm here. Hi, right, Jen. We can hear you. Go ahead. But oh, you can't see me, right? Nope, can't see you. Okay. Uh, this is Jennifer Fain, 11831 Northwest 9th Street. Um, I'm speaking tonight, tonight not only as the acting president of the Plantation Acres HOA, but as a grateful homeowner of the city of Plantation. Tonight, um, what I have to say is a little different, but, you know, the angle is a little bit different than where I'm usually coming from. But <clears throat> I wanted to let you all know that how I feel as an Acres resident who's lived through the struggles to keep our little slice of the city green with barns and wide open spaces as we knew it when we chose to buy here. When we saw the threats of change, we came together. We made new friends. We learned about each other. We made t-shirts, buttons, flyers. We wrote letters. We staked our lawns with signs. We went to as many meetings in the city as we were invited to. We spoke up and we were heard. We know how busy you all are. We know how many people ask things of you. So tonight, we are saying thank you. Thank you, Mayor Stoner, for coming to our HO meet A meeting last month. Thank you for answering the battery of questions that came at you. Thank you for helping us understand your views on keeping plantation green. And council, thank you for keeping your channels open and for showing interest in our HOA. I encourage other HOAs to make connections with the wonderful people that we see up here. We are fortunate, we're a for, fortunate city to have them and to listen to our pleas. On another note, most of you are not aware of the park land that we have in the North Acres. This is not the time to go into an explanation of this land. But I, I would like to thank Mayor Stoner again. We as an HOA, thank you so much for taking that walk with our neighbors through the park. Residents were so happy to see and hear about it. Mayor, you brought staff. Thank you, Jason Munimaker, Samira Shalon, Steve Rogers, and Councilman Nick Sordal. Mayor, you took notes, you listened, and answered key questions that we had for this precious piece of land that we have been so concerned about. It seems that you are going above and beyond, and we thank you. Let's keep it up. That's all for tonight, guys. Thank you, Jen. Thank you. Thanks, Jen. Thank you. Do we have any other comments to the council from people in the chambers or online? Seeing none, we're going to close uh, comments. And bear with me, we're on to the consent agenda. The consent agenda consists of items 5 through 12 and may be approved with one motion. Does any member of the council wish to pull any item of the consent agenda? Does any member of the public wish to pull an item? Okay, then I will take a motion. Motion to approve consent agenda items 5 through 12. Second. Motion and second. City clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilmember Sordal? Yes. Councilmember Andrew? Yes. Councilmember Fagin? Yes. Councilmember Horland? Yes. Councilmember Anderson? Yes. Thank you. We are up to uh, legislative items. Item number 13. Quinton, do you have to read that? Yes, I do. Okay, go ahead. Thank sir. you, sir. An ordinance of the City of Plantation, Florida, pertaining to water conservation, repealing and replacing the sections of Article 8 of Chapter 26, water shortage plan to provide an update updated landscape irrigation code that achieves water conservation and to provide an updated water shortage plan consistent with the requirements of the South Florida Water Management District, providing for the intended purpose, providing definitions, providing for the applicability of the ordinance, providing for a declaration of 
water shortage or water shortage emergency, providing for variances, providing for enforcement, providing for penalties, providing for codification, providing for conflicts, providing for severability, and providing an effective date. Okay. Mr. President. It's providing for anything else. There's a lot of providings in there. <laughs> uh, any discussion? Get a motion, motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second. City Clerk. Uh, any comments from the public? City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilmember Sortle? Yes. Councilmember Andrew? Yes. Councilmember Fadgen? Yes. Councilmember Horland? Yes. Councilmember Anderson? Yes. Thank you. Attorney Morgan, could you please read number 14? Thank you, sir. An ordinance of the City of Plantation, Florida, pertaining to the subject of garbage and refuse, amending Chapter 10, garbage and refuse, to update provisions related to granting of Franchise agreements for collection of construction and demolition debris and to update provisions related to recovered materials and procedures for recovered materials dealers. Providing for codification, providing for severability, and providing for conflicts and providing for an effective date. Okay. Motion to approve. Got a motion from Councilmember Horland. Anybody wish to second? Second. Motion and a second. Any comments from the public? Any comments from council members? City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilmember Sorrell? Yes. Councilmember Andrew? Yes. Councilmember Fadgen? Yes. Councilmember Horland? Yes. Councilmember Anderson? Yes. Thank you. Uh, item number 15, uh, Attorney Morgan, Morgan, would you please read that one? Thank you, sir. An ordinance of the City of Plantation, Florida, pertaining to stormwater management utility fee amending Chapter 9, Flood Plain. Stormwater Management, Article 7, entitled Stormwater Management Utility, Section 9, hyphen 103, entitled Stormwater Management Utility Fee to provide for annual adjustments to the equivalent residential unit ERU rate by resolution, amending Section 9, hyphen 104, entitled Annual Modification and Evaluations to ensure consistency with Section 1, hyphen 103, amending Section 9, hyphen 105, entitled Identity of the cons Customer and Collection of Fees to correct lettering of subsections to provide for codification, providing for severability, providing for conflicts, and providing for an effective date. Motion to approve. Got a motion. I'll second it. Any discussion? Any comments from the public online or in person? Um, I'll you. Go ahead. I'm so if, if I read this right, this is just giving us the right to adjust the rate thing. That's, there's no more to it than that. You're asking? I'm asking anybody. That's what that's what you read it to, right, Jen? Okay. Um, I'm good. Just ask the You're good. Okay. Then, City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilmember Sortle. I had a last minute worry. That's why it took me a minute. It's okay. Uh, yes. Councilmember Andrew? Yes. Councilmember Fragin? Yes. Councilmember Horland? Yes. Councilmember Anderson? Yes. Thank you. Item 16. Attorney Morgan, could you read that one? Yes, sir. An ordinance of the City of Plantation, Florida, pertaining to the subject of zoning and land development, amending section 27-93, overlay zoning districts by creating subsection E, entitled PWSDE, Plantation Walk, Shopping, Dining, and Entertainment District, amending the zoning map for the City of Plantation to delineate the PWSDE district amending the physical and digital versions of the land development regulations and map providing for codification, providing savings clause, providing for conflicts, and providing an effective date. Thank you. Um, Councilmember Andre, you, you uh, go ahead. Thank you. I do have some questions on this. First of all, was the Midtown Advisory uh, Board, did they see this, review it, and approve this? And then, as Mr. Holmes comes to the mic, also, I'm not clear, what are the real pros and cons of having this overlay district? Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the Council, for the record, Dan Holmes, Planning, Zoning, Economic Development Director. With regard to the uh, Midtown uh, Board, we did send a copy of the ordinance out to the board uh, for comment. I did get... Uh, a, just one comment from uh, uh, Mr. Lethbridge, who uh, it, it wasn't really related to the entertainment district it, itself. He wanted to tell me that uh, 
he, he felt that they were having some problems on, uh, you know, one of their properties with regard to parking. He, he said that uh, there were uh, people that were uh, kind of frequenting the plantation walk uh, development would sometimes park on, on their property, and uh, he wanted us to just notify the, the management, uh, which I told him that I would uh, have a discussion with them in, in that regard. But that was the only comment that we received back in that regard. When was this sent to them? It was, it was sent to them on uh, Tuesday, I think. Uh, yeah, Tuesday. And there were some time constraints with regard to their next meeting, with them meeting by, by monthly or what have you. So, But we did uh, attempt to get it out to them to get comment. Is there a rush for this? Is there an immediate need? This could not be postponed until they've had a chance to review and discuss it? We Well, I will defer to the applicant on, on that. Uh, you know, staff has, you know, we... We're prepared to, to, to take it to them if that's what's required. Uh, but we did send it out for comment from them. And I, I know I've made these comments before. I just have a problem with when we have advisory committees and then we don't use those advisory committees to our advantage. Right. And I think this was an item that should have been shared and discussed on an agenda, you know, published agenda right. for them to have input on. I understand. The other question, and let me see if I remember the other question, you were trying to figure out kind of the general overall purpose of it. The, the, the overall purpose is to relax some of the standards that we generally have that apply to other properties uh, within the city. Uh, if you kind of look at the plantation walk, I tell people a lot of times if you can kind of you know, kind of put in your mind maybe the uh, Las Olas Boulevard corridor and the uh, more urban nature of things and the activity, the activity that's usually on the street there. Uh, we're trying to kind of create that same type of vibe uh, within uh, the plantation walk. It is uh, basically zoned for uh, more of an urban uh, type setting, which means there should be more activity, uh, you know, along the streets or what have you. So basically, this relaxes a lot of the standards in there that would allow them to kind of create more of that type of urban type of district. And I did understand that, but again, we're about to work on, or I think you're already currently working on the signage, right, ordinance, and making those changes already. And did we send anything out to the residents within that is it 300 feet now? What's the perimeter that we're using? Well, th this is just an ordinance to the code, so it's not a, uh, it's not like a site plan or, right, or anything of, of, of that nature. Right, you're now saying that we can increase the, the noise level, if you will. So, again, I, you don't think that we have a duty or an obligation to notify those residents? I look at this hearing tonight, this setting, <clears throat> as an opportunity once it's published for the residents to, to read that material and to speak tonight as part of the public hearing. It also went to the Planning and Zoning Board. That was another opportunity for residents to uh, show up and provide input as, as well. So there, there are settings here. This is first reading. We still have an opportunity for uh, some input and to make some modifications uh, to the ordinance. With regard to the ambient noise levels, I would have you know that basically they're looking to uh, the, the increase that they kind of show is, is about 5 to 10 decibels above what we generally consider natural ambient noise levels uh, for the city. So it's not a major increase in the noise levels. And the ordinance is sensitive to those boundary areas as well where uh, the noise levels uh, cannot be, uh, you know, increased as high as it can more to the center of the district where the, where the uh, actual restaurants and activity will be. So there was, there was some consideration with regard to the surrounding uh, residential uses. Okay, thank you, Mr. Holmes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Councilmember Andreu. Councilmember Fajan, go ahead. Okay, um, some of this is just to confirm what I read. Uh, so this overlay is just for their property? Correct. Okay. Um, I don't think I saw this in the ordinance, and I'm, I, I'm hoping it's not in there. You can't take a beverage from one establishment and walk it down the street. Yeah, that, that's not a provision that's in the ordinance. Now, however, the ordinance would allow for special type events to take place uh, on site there 
where you could have some vendors that might come in for that event that have uh, that might uh, sell alcoholic beverage establishments that would be kind of moving around in the general plaza area there. So, but that would be for a special event. Well, I, I think that would be terrible for the tenants, but that's their decision. Um, so what kind of entertainment are we doing? And, and also we'll allow tenants to, to do, uh, to kind like of put the their booth out there as well. And street. To, uh, that's correct. Okay, I gotcha. Um, what, so what kind of entertainment? Just kind of... Well, well, we'll say... Defined or... Yeah, so... Restricts it to? Right, so when we say entertainment, if you, if you kind of think about the individual restaurants or some of the alcoholic beverage establishments that may locate in there, it allows them to, uh, you know, to, to have, uh, you know, uh, maybe music, uh, you know, within the uh, establishment, small, it, it limits a small little area that uh, is, it can be provided in some of the establishments for, like, dance floors or, or what have you. Um, if you think about these type shopping centers or districts, sometimes doing just a normal business day, it would allow for some music to kind of be piped through as you kind of walk along and, and go to the, your different venues, your restaurants, or some of the retail shopping. And then it would allow for, again, like a, a special event. You might have, uh, I don't know, a, a fall uh, you know, art festival or something that the uh, Plantation Walk might like to sponsor where you, you might have, uh, you know, some music that might allow sometimes if you've gone out, I know I go to Sawgrass, for example, sometimes, and there's a guy out in the, you know, playing the saxophone or whatever as people are kind of walking by. And so it, it does allow for uh, some activity of that nature. Um, next two items, not really specific to this, but is there any intention to remove those temporary signs along University Drive? The, which temporary? They have uh, signs up that are not permanent um, signage along University Drive. I, I guess I'm fatigued by all the oh, is it, signs and all that kind of stuff. I think it's time to get back to normal. Uh, they just they have like kind of campaign type signs. Wooden okay. signs in, on the perimeter along University Drive. Right. I think oh. it's time to get rid of them. Right. We, we will t take a look at this. Is, 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 is that specific to Plantation Walk or just in general? That's Plantation you're saying? Walk. Okay, okay. I mean, they're, well, they're, they're, they're throughout the city. Yeah. What's that? The entire city, they've been told, COVID's been told. Right. Um, well, they weren't even open during COVID, so they put them up just for the sake of putting them up. Yeah. So I'm now, just saying I think it's time to put them up. Now, I know they have some signs, and uh, I, I kind of drive by there on a weekly basis or so just to kind of get a feel of how things are progressing. I know that some of the tenants that they are interested in, in uh, that they probably signed already, that have uh, signage in the window saying the coming they, soon. I'm sorry? Get something on the wall? Yeah, yeah they have like, the, they, they have some signage that says coming soon or, or what have you. But we will take a look at that. Temporary signs that, that disappear. Uh, it's supposed to be a nice facility and you got all these temporary signs there. Last thing, um, and I get a lot of complaints. People think I did this, but, or we did this. Uh, the entertainment surcharge, horrible idea. <laughs> I would just make a cam to the tenants. Um, I'm just relaying what's communicated to me. I don't know. I, don't, I didn't like it when I went to the, whatever that restaurant is. I forget the name of it now. Taco Craft, Taco Craft Taco is the, Craft. the one that's open now. All right, that's all. Thank you. All right. Uh, Council, Member, Council Member Sortle, go ahead. Council Member Fadgen, that was a good comment about the surcharge. Um, just a quick question. The city can't do anything about that, right? That's up to them. That, yeah, I'm not We, we can't do anything saying if you... I'm, I'm, I'm just, no, I'm just making sure, because I've been asked the same thing, and they're going, why doesn't the city step in? And I think my answer is we can't. It's, it's their, it's their deal. Yeah, if, if it's the management, if yeah. they're charging that for their... Okay, I just, uh, just want to make sure that, yeah. Um, I, I wasn't aware that they were doing it. Yeah. So. <laughs> You're not on the Internet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Council Member Andrew talked about this seeming a, a little bit quick. I'm, I'm kind of on the other side. Um, I think an overlay has been in the plans for this, like the second. Mayor and I were there when Art Falcone cut the ground, if you remember, and they, we were talking overlay then because we were talking about zoning and how we are going to do everything. Um, to me, this is a long time coming, and, and I'm kind of the opposite. It's like, what the hell's taking so long? But that's just my opinion. I understand. I think, I think the applicant would agree with you. They've been <laughs> asking us, when is it coming? <laughs> yes. 
Uh, Councilmember Harlan, do you? Oh, I yes, just, just a quick comment. Um, I agree with uh, the comments that have been made. I understand um, Councilmember Andre's discomfort with the advisory board not being notified sooner. Um, again, Mr. Holmes, you stated it. This is the first meeting of the ordinance. Uh, they would have an opportunity, but I really want to make sure because I think both those advisory boards, Gateway and Midtown, have often um, found out about these type of things that impact the district um, later rather than sooner. Um, I, I think about when we were looking at buying that property in the CRA, CRA and Gateway didn't know about that. So I think it's important that while it's been sent to them, that perhaps staff makes additional outreach and lets them know that it's coming back for a second meeting. Um, because I think that uh, council would like to hear from everyone. And then to Mr. Uh, Councilor Soto's point, I agree. We're at that, that groundbreaking. Uh, Mr. Falcone talked about, you know, holding uh, kind of town square events there, and he was really interested in seeing plantation law, um, you know, as a hub for activity and festivals and things like that. I think it's going to be welcome um, in the area. I think people are, people are hungry for it. Um, so I'm, I'm thrilled that we're finally getting to take a look at this overlay. Now, just one question, Mr. Holmes. I know we're dealing with the plantation law, but hadn't we at one point uh, looked at the possibility, and I know we're, we're being held up with sabotage, but also looking at a potential overlay at the Barrett Mall area? Yes, let, let me tell you, we, we it, you know, initially, and I, I think Councilmember Sordo kind of brought up the point that we talked about uh, the overlay uh, some time ago. And I think initially we looked at, you know, maybe this whole Midtown district, but then as we really took a look at it as staff, we thought it really wasn't appropriate to just kind of lay it out over the entire district because there are certain areas within the district where it's not appropriate. So we started really looking at what we consider to be the pretty much what we'll call the little activity nodes uh, that are with, within the district, which Plantation Walk would be one, Broward Mall would be another one, uh, the fountains uh, could be, you know, another area. And we will go back and, and uh, sit with those owners as well. And uh, that's why this one's called the Plantation Walk uh, Overlay District, but you could very well have a, uh, you know, a Broward Mall overlay, the fountains overlay, where we can kind of define uh, very similar activity and kind of just uh, make sure that we're keeping that type of activity in that particular node as opposed to uh, throughout the entire district. Thank you, Mr. Holmes. I think that's important. While someone may want to live in Midtown um, and access those type of activities, they may not want to live right on top of it, um, and others may choose to do so. So I do think it's important that we're thoughtful about where we put those notes. So thank you. All right. And, and, and I have one other thing because, as you know, we did talk about ensuring that we were getting developments out at the at the gateway meeting. When, when kind of when we went through COVID, that that was a general practice that we were doing. COVID kind of slowed things down, and we kind of got away from that. But uh, in fact, at, at my recent staff meeting, I uh, indicated to staff that we are we have to get back to ensuring that all this information is disseminated out again. So it, it is something that we are cognizant of, and we'll make sure that it happens. Councilmember Horland, I guess, and Andrea, I, I want to ask the two of my colleagues a question. Is that, I, I'm con I have a similar concern. I, I, I'm for this district, at least to my knowledge so far. Um, it's, it's a long time coming, but I really wish the, the board knew about it and, and could weigh in. Is it enough with the readings in between that they can? Or is this something, Mr. I guess? Mr. Mr. President, I'm fine going forward tonight. I would just ask that staff make additional outreach to that board so that they could weigh in before the second uh, reading. So they're really prepared going into it. Uh, well, they're only going to have that one shot at the second reading. Uh, absolutely. In fact, what I'll do, I, I will uh, make uh, calls to each of them to go over okay. the ordinance okay. with them so that I'm uh, assured that any comments they have. I did, as I, as I said, uh, Mr. Mr. Lethbridge did send me information and we kind of corresponded yeah. back and forth. So I will uh, personally touch base with uh, each of the other members to, to see if they have any comments prior to it coming back for second reading and any uh, feedback or input that I get, I'll make sure that that's uh, known to you and, and put on the record for second reading. Any other comments? Um, it, what is, uh, Ms. Begler, what is it? Yeah, what a panelist, is that someone, is it just Councilmember Hart's hand was still up? Is that what it was? 
Mr. Mr. President, I'll make a motion to approve. Oh, okay. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any comments from the public? Any comments online? This is on item 16. Hearing none, City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilmember Sordal? Yes. Councilmember Andrew? Yes. Councilmember Pageant? Yes. Councilmember Horland? Yes. Councilmember Anderson? Yes. Thank you. We appreciate your time very much, and we were listening on the signs. And for Barry Lethbridge on his party. We rent from him. Based on probably our cars. Anyway, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Laystrom. Thank you. On to quasi judicial items. Um, <laughs> items 17 to 21. Um, who? I, I still don't have a straight little time. Do you? Which, which of the two you want to swear them in? Okay, I can. I can do both. What, whatever is the pleasure of, of the president. So I'll, I'll read the, the proceedings and then I'll swear everybody in who plans on testifying. Quasi-judicial proceedings uh, for items 17 through 21. Uh, I will swear in all witnesses before our speaking. Uh, please state your name and whether you have been administered an oath. Uh, prior to speaking, any speaker may be cross-examined. If you refuse to be cross-examined, your testimony may not be considered. Cross-examination shall be conducted in a courteous manner. The material in the city clerk agenda packet will be made a part of the record. The city staff will make the first presentation, followed by a presentation from the applicant, any affected parties, and the public. Uh, then the uh, city council may set a reasonable time limit for speakers. The hearing will, been, will then be closed and the matter decided. The city council's decision will be delineated in its motion and rendered in, in, in writing by way of a development or a resolution or ordinance evidencing its decision. The city council may also decide to continue the matter to a designated time, which will also be advertised for that time to allow for additional research or review for the items. So if you plan on speaking on any of the items 17, 17 through 21 tonight, please stand and raise your right hand. You swear affirm the testimony you'll give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. You may be seated. Yes. Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Morgan, Attorney Morgan. Okay, item 17. We already have Councilman Andre, you're buzzing in. Andre, you're buzzing. I'd just like to make a Jennings disclosure as well for uh, Chen Med. It will not impact my vote. Thank you. We're on. Okay. So item 17. Okay, so that was just you doing a Jennings disclosure. Okay. Good evening. Actually, we have a presentation for 17, 18, and 19 together. If we right. could read the titles of all of them. That would be preferred. Okay, so item number 17 is um, PP21-0042, uh, consideration of a request to, to approval of a waiver request for public supermarket. The property is located at 591 South University Drive-In Zone, M-PM. Item 18 is also PP21-0042, consideration of a request for conditional use of approval for public supermarket. The property is located at 591 South University Drive and zoned M-PM. And the third item con combined is item 19, PP21-0042, consideration request for site plan elevation and landscape plan approval for public supermarket. Properties located at 591 South University Drive and zoned M-PM. So go ahead. Good evening, Mayor, City Council, City Attorney, City Clerk, and all in attendance. I'm Michael Alpert, Assistant Director of Planning, Zoning, and Economic Development. The subject property is located at 591 South University Drive, which is right there. <laughs> Site is about 4.4 acres in size. It was developed in 1995 with a 35,000 square foot Barnes & Noble bookstore. The site's zoning designation is Mixed Use Plantation Midtown, MPM. 
The surrounding properties are also zoned Midtown, um, Plantation Midtown, with the exception of the single-family residential properties along the eastern side of University Drive. The Brio Italian Grill is located to the north, the Red Lobster Restaurant and the Coles Department Store are located to the south, and the Extended Stay Hotel is located directly west of this site. So the applicant has several requests, including site plan elevation and landscape plan approval for to construct a 29,739 square foot grocery store and a 1,400 square foot liquor store. Uh, conditional use approval to allow the package liquor store and 10 zoning and three landscape waivers from chapter 27 of the code. This is the proposed site layout. The building is in the approximately same location as the current bookstore, which will be demolished and replaced with this building. Most of the parking layout in front of the building is angled parking, whereas the bulk of the parking at the perimeters is 90 degree parking, straight in parking stalls. The site maintains a large landscape buffer in the property that fronts University Drive. This plan demonstrates the pervious and impervious surfaces of the site, the green being pervious, of course. There are two access driveways from the north connecting from Federated Roadway. The easternmost driveway leads to the parking area and the front of the store. The westernmost driveway leads to the parking and the rear loading areas, and there's an additional driveway from Southwest 6th Street. And both of those western driveways, obviously, um, customers would make a right turn or a left turn to get to the main parking area since the front of the store is, is near the main parking lot. And all of these are existing driveways. The traffic analysis projects that there will be a slight decrease in overall trips, partially due to the decrease in the building size and the parking lot capacity. This plan shows a pedestrian walkway system. It's a little difficult to see um, because it was superimposed over an aerial, but if you can see the red arrows uh, along the sidewalks that connect um, from the building to the perimeter sidewalks. The applicant has worked with staff on revising the architectural design. On the top of the slide is the front facade, which faces University Drive. At the bottom is the rear facade, which faces the hotel and has less architectural embellishment. On the next slide, the top rendering is the side facade, which faces the main entrance driveway, and the bottom rendering is the south facade. And then we also have um, some three-dimensional perspective views. Some notab notable design features include a sloped roof delineating the primary pedestrian entrance, projecting masses to address the length of the building and to provide architectural interest at the corners, projecting columns and aluminum and tiled canopies that provide for a covered walkway. And here are the color and material um, selections. Here's the floor plan, the main customer stock and sales area of the grocery store, the storage and loading areas, in the rear, the two entry vestibules, the cart storage area, which is enclosed, the pharmacy and the liquor store, which is separated from the main store and has a distinct entrance. With respect to the conditional use application, staff reviewed the applicant's criteria responses and finds that the proposed liquor store use is consistent with the general plan of the district it's compatible with the adjacent commercial uses and should not adversely affect the neighborhood. The next slide shows an overview of the various requested waivers. Given that it's a little difficult to read um, at this scale, I will summarize them on the next few slides. The first waiver is for a parking reduction. The new uses require 154 parking stalls. This plan incorporates 133 spaces, which is a deficit of 21 spaces, a 14% reduction. Publix's position on this is that they believe it is sufficient for their needs. Um, if the parking lot were to be at full capacity, there are other grocery stores, Publix grocery stores that their customers would, would travel to. Waivers two through six are all related to the position of the building on the site and the amount of glazing integrated into the facades per the 
Midtown uh, District regulations. These are grouped together as locational standards. The primary orientation of the building should have faced a B level street, either north or south, but the applicant has chosen to orient it in the primary facade facing east, um, which is the same orientation that the bookstore currently has. Waivers 7 through 10 are from design standards of the district. They're all related to the rear facade having less ornamentation than the other facades. The applicant contends that since it is a loading area and it is less visible from the main roadway, that is University Drive, that less attention should be afforded to its design than the other three facades that are more visible. <laughs> the last three waivers are landscape related. Two of them have to do with the pedestrian landscape zone uh, length and width. The third waiver is related to missing some trees in the parking lot islands due to conflicts with infrastructure. However, with regard to the planning, uh, sorry, the um, pedestrian landscape zone length waiver from 249 lineal feet that are required to 111 feet, staff believes that there may be an opportunity to increase the actual planting areas where it doesn't conflict with the pedestrian access points. So if you see on the graphic, the two green shaded areas potentially could add a little bit more planting and therefore have less of a waiver. It's, it would still require a waiver, but it would potentially have um, some more shrubs and trees and ground cover. Yes? With those planting, if we didn't approve that and we didn't put in the landscaping, would it help the parking? Not really, would it? This, it would not affect yeah, right. the parking. Okay. In this case, it's in the yeah. right alongside the colonnade. So, right, and obviously we understand we don't want to have areas where uh, customers would trample over any shrubs or anything like that. So it's that. Therefore, we still need a waiver, but perhaps there's a little bit more opportunity. Is what staff's proposing here. Some other pertinent information, the community meeting was conducted on December 14th, uh, 2021, and the applicant stated that no one from the public attended this meeting. There have not been any public inquiries or concerns expressed to staff in writing or on uh, phone calls to our knowledge. Um, and then there, are no, there aren't any known code violations on the property at this time. Uh, staff conducted an analysis of the proposal and finds that the plan is compatible with the surrounding neighborhood, that it's in compliance with the comprehensive plan. Um, the plans are generally consistent with the zoning code in terms of site development sufficiency, the notification procedures, the conditional use criteria, and the practical difficulty criteria for the waivers. So in conclusion, based on the findings and conclusions outlined in the staff report, staff recommends approval subject to the conditions noted in the backup uh, for the conditional use, site plan elevations, landscape plan, and the zoning and landscape waivers. Um, and uh, staff and the applicant are here for any questions you may have. Thank you. Mayor, go ahead. Um, Mr. Albert, I'm not sure if you would be the person to answer this or the applicant. Okay. So, um, I've always been advised that this was a site that would be basically a green-wise store. And um, yet they, they've applied as Publix. So, don't we have... Um, something on the books about we can't have liquor stores in a certain proximity of each other? And why would the same entity want uh, or be granted two liquor stores? Um, with regard to the green lights, that would be the applicant to answer that. Uh, we do have a distance separation um, requirement, and it meets that. So they would, otherwise they would ask for a waiver for that. Could you remind me, please? I, offhand, I'm not sure. Um, it's, it, it's in the documents. It's it, also, I believe it's in the backup. Um, so, uh, 
total wine is closer. And right. It still right. meets the distance for total wine. Right. I understand total wine. Right, it right. Makes sense. Yeah. It's a different entity. Sure. But if you're coming in as the same entity, then why are you sort of, I feel like it's sort of double dipping. And, you know, we're, even as we did the overlays for Broward Mall and Midtown, we were very careful to limit the number of what I call watering holes <laughs> um, for a specific reason. Yet here we are encouraging and, and you're indicating approval of two uh, liquor stores in a close proximity. And um, I'm, not, I'm not in favor of that. Uh, you know, I'm all for the green wise. Yeah. Bring it in, and I know they'll have a mix of regular Publix things in there, but it will be a concentration of uh, a different type of food, um, a little more organic, maybe vegan, whatever, and I'm good with that. But I don't like the liquor store component as part of that. I don't think it's appropriate. I don't think it's necessary. I think the store will be more than successful on its own without including that. So, um, and I, I'm still looking for the um, landscape. <laughs> so I'll be back to you on that. <laughs> Thank you, sir. It's sure. the third um, landscape plan and so forth are on number 19 of the three. What? Of the three items, it's number 19, then you click on the landscape one. Oh, I just, that's the way I used to do it. That's how I used to run the problems <laughs> thousands of pages. Yes. Well, uh, in the meantime, Councilmember Sortel, you buzzed in. Go ahead. My, my questions are pretty much the same. Um, and clearly the applicant has thought about this, and they have the question of a, do you get seasick going back and forth, and is it too close? Could, I'd really like to hear from them right now, if you don't mind. So uh, Tell me what you all are thinking, if you please. Is that our question? Yeah. That's what we all want to know, I think. Hi, John Voigt, Dumar Ellsworth, attorney for the applicant, 1130 Southwest 73rd Avenue Plantation. The, um, if you recall, the Cleary and Knob Hill was about 40,000 square feet. They tore it down, and it's now 56,000. They made it much larger. They didn't have a place for a second store. They say they find, public says they find their customers would rather have two smaller identical stores to divert it rather than one superstore like a Super Target or a Walmart. They had no choice at that location. It's one of their larger ones. The, the existing Publix at the corner of Peters and University Drive is much larger. It's over 40,000 square feet. This is 29. It has a pharmacy. It has a liquor store. They could expand that one they could have they said this is a better location divert the crowd have a pharmacy a liquor store it's a regular Publix just to they in Tamarack they have two that are diagonally across the street from each other in one location they said many places around the state they have them where they're next door to each other and the idea is it, it just making another place and that if they don't have something at one of them you go to the other one if this one looks crowded you go to the other one and Yes, it's, um, it, it, it's, you're bringing more service. Right. Were we wrong about the idea that, a, that we thought it was going to be a green wise? It's a regular public. It's not a green wise. Was, was, no, it's was, a regular public. Was that something that was presented or talked about, or did we imagine that, or was it just scuttlebutt? I don't or? know. I, I think that was I, just. I understand you can't get inside my so head. God love me. That was, I remember, on the one at Cleary and Knob Hill, the mayor asked, she heard this was going to be a green wise, and the person we had from Publix said they had no idea because they really didn't have know anything about that project. But it's been a regular Publix from the day that we got involved in it. We were not involved as of that day. And how much of this is related to development in Midtown as well? In what what, what motivated you to, to open another public oh, while we are also building? Well, all of the apartments right behind, like Camden is just opening, they figure it's going to serve this group. You know, it's, as a general rule, people coming from the south or on Peters will go to the first one. People coming from the north will either go to the one on Broward or they'll come here. But you've got the Midtown crowd from the existing uh, 24 apartments and the, the new Camden that's opening and the others that are being built in the area. You know, there's a very small Publix over on 
Pine Island. That's their idea, is they want to have it to serve people everywhere, because I've been in the little one on Pine Island, and I don't think I would go there even if I lived across the street, you know. So it's, you know, you know they opened, remember there's a tiny one in Davie they opened across from, uh, you know, so it's the idea is to be more convenient for the customers rather than have a mega superstore site with a sea of parking. I'm sorry, one more, guys, real quick. I presume that Publix has marketing people. They do a marketing study, yes, and yes. their math shows that this is going to work. Yes, and, and it, I think this came to them because Barnes & Noble was failing. They have a long-term land lease with the owners. National Retail Properties owns the, that area, and they weren't going to let them out of their lease until they found a replacement, and they decided it was most suitable as a grocery store site, and they went around marketing it to people. I think that it's not big enough for Target and Walmart and people like that. You know, there's a Whole Foods that they don't expand in that number, so, and they'd already moved out of Plantation. So it was Publix is really the only grocery that was interested, and they were enthusiastic about it, even though it's smaller than their typical store. So, I mean, that's that's their thinking. They're very comfortable with it, you know. You good, Councilmember Member Sorrell? Yeah. Do you know the site, the size of the, um, I just blocked on the name, the, the, the Publix that's on Pine Island that was up by American Express is the best way I could say it. Oh, the, 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 the small one. I do not know the size. I think it's smaller than this. Yes. It's smaller than this? I I'm believe so. In my mind, all the different Publix that I've been, where is it going to fit on that? Well, I mean, if you look at it, it will be about half the size of the one at Cleary and Nob Hill. Well, that's a big one. Right. Do you know I, I believe it's comparable, um, roughly 27,000, 28,000 square feet. Brand, what, I think. Shops? Veranda shops, yes. Right. I believe it's about the same size okay. as this one. A, a similar size? Yes. And, you know, the, the one at the Peters and uh, Pine Island, or Peters and University, is much larger because it was in Albertsons. It wasn't built in their scale. And they've got even a second floor. So if you count the second floor, it's like three times the size of this one. And so they're going to still have the cooking school there, have offices and stuff there that this store won't have. And that, that one has a sea of parking in the back. And so that one can serve. If the other one is full, people will go to that one. Just that you can always... I know the only time I've ever had to park in the back, I said we do that December 24th and uh, December 31st when my wife makes me go to Publix with her. You know, we park back behind over by whatever that's called and uh, always check out the dog walk behind there when I do that. Excuse me? What's behind you? What do you mean? Zona Fresca? No, it's over back there. You know, behind, yeah. there's it, next to what used to be, there was the Chinese place back there. Yeah, and, but I was in, and they got the, the animal clinic there, I said, with the outdoor dog walk we did. Mm -hmm. Yes, next to the Amley Apartments in the back. So that's, and that's, again, they, that, they believe those people would be more likely to walk through. You know, there's a connectivity to that Publix. That's what they're hoping with those sidewalk connectivities to get the Camden and the Midtown people from behind the fountains over there. Councilman Andrea, go ahead. I just have to agree with Mayor Stoner that, well, I'm disappointed it's not Greenwise because I thought the same thing just because it was mentioned here. But now we understand that that was a rumor and we can't go by rumors. But I don't agree with the liquor store aspect because the other Publix that's on University and Peters has a large liquor store and, and a pharmacy as well. Right. But yeah, the, the liquor store gives me pause. Well, it's, it meets distance separation requirements so anyone else could put one there. And it's, it's really a deal breaker for Publix not to have it. That, that's, uh, I mean, it's very important to them. Well, it's. Uh, okay. <coughs> council member, why did, oh, council member, uh, mayor, it's actually your turn. Go ahead. I'm, I'm somewhat well, disappointed in your explanation as to why they want a second site. If you don't find it there, you can go to their other one. I have nothing but time but to go to Publix to Publix. You know, there's an element of greed here that doesn't set well with me. It's not good business. It's greed. There's more than enough room for University and Peters, and it's shown itself over time. Those clients are very faithful. 
and I don't care that we've got more apartments coming in over there or we don't, I'm, I'm, for them to go out in the community and say there's still a market for them to still get at over what they've got, They've got a Publix on every flame and corner and plantation. And, and you can go back and tell them for me, I am so sick and tired of every single Publix having a different layout. <laughs> well, they, they have different models. They intentionally have different layouts because they don't want it to be cookie cutter. system, but um, look, I don't vote on this, folks. But this doesn't sit well with me. And, and for all these different things, it's just there has to be some concessions here, whether it's the liquor store or not, because I don't I don't know, um, but it doesn't it just doesn't set well for what, how we're trying to envision our city moving forward and the growth that we're going to allow and why we're going to allow, you know, to. Uh, liquor stores within 1,200 feet of each other. Well, and they're outside of the distance separation requirement, so they are, would be allowed for anyone else to do it, and it's not just a freestanding liquor store. It's to serve public's customers, and it's going to be shorter hours even than the public's is open. It's just literally that's their business model. Yep. Well, again, I'm not the one that sets it, but if I was on that side, I wouldn't approve this. Not, in a, not for anything. It just doesn't fit what I think, I think we're trying to accomplish. I, I don't see how an accessory of a liquor store to a Publix, you know, would have, you know, just as all well, those. That's uh, sort of the problem. I mean, I don't understand how the, that harms the, uh, the community. Because, I mean, as you said, we have them. It's kind of a routine thing. Face of plantation, we have a Publix on every two every corner and a half, and everyone has a liquor component. Gee, what a great example to set. Nah, and that doesn't, again, it may work for others and that vote, but I'm just taking a second here to say it doesn't sit well with me. So thank you very much. I'm, in a, I'm not sure when <laughs> Councilor Horland buzzed in, but I, I said no, my, my hands are raised go to you, for President. Councilor Horland, go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, my hand's been raised for a while. Yeah, it's, I, mean, um, I keep I, looking I, down at the board. I apologize. It's okay. It's okay. Yep. It's hard when I'm in Zoom. Um, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but I've long had a lot of um, issues with this uh, project, and uh, we've heard a lot of it tonight. Um, I'm going to go to Council Member Sortle's comment about a marketing study, because I just came up with another project recently. Sure, retail um, you know, in, uh, companies do a market study. Um, and to the worst point, that they often look at grabbing more market share. Um, you've seen that model with Walgreens in, in years past and, and other um, companies who, if we can grab more of the market share in more locations, then we keep the competition out. And that's fine. That's the business model. But as a city of plantation, we don't have to agree that that's what we want in our city. And this goes back to the conversation I've been having about planning. And, and all of us sitting down and having a really in-depth discussion about what we want the city to look like. I've been asking for quite some time, uh, we talked about walkability and mobility in the Midtown area. And I've been asking, Plantation Walk, why can't we have a grocery store over there? Um, I, this is not a walkable store. Uh, the one at Peter's has Omni behind it. It's walkable. Um, I don't know who we're providing service to because people are going to have to get in their car uh, to access this public. So when they in there, there's one right down the street. It's exactly a mile. Uh, that one was promised to be a full green lines, and it never really was. It's a quasi green lines. Um, it's not like some of the others I've seen up in Palm Beach County, for sure. And... Um, I don't know why we all were under the impression that I also was that this was going to be a green lines, but that's neither here nor there. I don't think it's appropriate location. I don't think that it provides the service that we are saying that we want the residents in Midtown to have, and that is walkability. Uh, and I, I question that trip generator study. 
Um, how anyone can say that a Publix will not generate more trips grocery store than the Barnes and Noble? Um, I, I question those, those numbers. And um, as I said, everyone's made pretty much the same comments, but I'm not in favor of this project going forward. Thank you, Mr. President. You're welcome. Yes, it is up to, I just want to, uh, was, would you, I don't know if, yeah, lower the hand. Okay. Got You're going to hear me argue against myself back and forth here. I got like five different things. <laughs> These voices in my head, I can't help it. Um, uh, somewhat related, but not, is there talk of a Sprouts at the American Express building? And am I getting way ahead of myself? Or do you know anything about that? I don't know anything about that. I'm sorry. That's okay. uh, Bill you should ask. Okay. Um, I believe in a free market. And so if you build things and customer supply and demand, if the customers want it and there's demand for it, I believe a business has the right to offer it as much as people want. But that said, I agree with, here I go. Uh, that said, I, Mayor Stoner, you picked up on something that I hear out there. I hear a ton of groans whenever I tell anybody. There's a public going in at, at that thing. And it's like, people's shoulders slump and it's like they got hit in the stomach. They, for some reason, it doesn't sit right with them. Um, to the liquor store, though, I, I politely disagree. I want liquor stores that people can walk to. I don't want liquor stores people can drive to. <laughs> you get three rum and cokes in and you say, let's go get more liquor. I'm, I would rather people walk than drive. I mean, come on, that's, you know, that's my thinking. I grew up in a small town. Okay, we had liquor stores, you walk to the liquor store. Nobody, yeah, come on. Um, but that said, if you want to walk to liquor store, you can walk to Total Wine from where you are. <laughs> See what I mean? So you can walk there. So uh, I agree strongly both ways. <laughs> well, that, can that cancels each other out, doesn't it? Count some more fat. Go ahead. Got to believe that Publix, you know, like Home Depot. They build those their stores before there's anything around them, and I got to think that Publix is a sophisticated company that they're doing the same thing. If there's there's going to be a need there, and um, the walkability, you know, it's supposed to be a walkable uh, area. Um, my thought on the liquor store is compared to other like an independent liquor store or other type of liquor store, a Publix liquor store is probably the most um, preferable because it's you know it's just going to be a clean liquor store it's not going to have some of the extra stuff that an independent liquor store might have I don't know if they sell cigarettes at Publix but maybe they do but um, mm -hmm. at the liquor store no in Publix <laughs> so uh, I, I got to believe that they're willing to put it in there's a need for it or there will be a need for it and uh, I mean, I feel like they meet the uh, the separation aspect for the um, liquor store, and if we're going to have a liquor store, Publix liquor store is probably the best one because it's going to be the least seedy, for lack of a better word. So that's all my comments. So I guess it's my turn. Um, <clears throat> actually, I'm going to ask you, Mayor, since you've sat up here the longest. I believe it's, I, I believe what Councilmember Sortle said, free market businesses should have a right to come and try. Yes. However, we also have a right to determine our destiny as a city, yes. and do we need that? So we have to weigh that out. And so, we, and back to Councilmember uh, Horland's comment, we, we want a comprehensive plan to discuss, to know our vision going forward. My thought is, they want to get in also because eventually, even though it's not come across our plates, we eventually something's going to be done with Broward Mall, and they want to be the closest thing to it. I think they want to get their foothold in early. They have enough deep enough pockets, and that's their motive, in addition to the couple that Mr. Boyd named. Um, but what we don't want something to be vacant in the heart of our city either. But I assume it would be so that's So that's what I'm asking. That's what I'm coming to. Uh, we, I'm, I assume it's a very sought-after property. Um, if Barnes and Noble really needed to get out of a lease, they, they could have shopped around, and I'm sure there would have been other people falling over to get that site. Right. So I don't. I didn't really phrase it as a question, but since you're ready to talk, go ahead. But, but I'm always ready to talk. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, my heart is here in this city, and it, it just 
seems to get, I don't know, whatever. But um, we've ha had several, several meetings on the Broward Mall. Um, uh, <clears throat> one of the people is extremely successful at what he does, but he said after he presented everything to me, what did I think? I said, well, to tell you the truth right now, I'm sick to my stomach because of what they, their vision of what they want to put there. And it's so important, to me at least, what are we going to put on the corner? You know, um, could we do more apartments? Sure, but is that really what we want the middle of our city to be? Um, J.C. Penney has, has a contract on it, but J.C. Penney is staying. Macy's is not leaving. They are the most profitable store in the mall. They are negotiating right now with the, the, the Seritage slash Sears property, and YOLO has indicated they'll still come in. So I'm trying to preserve that. I have done an ask. I have asked for five acres to build a new fire um, station that is strictly Midtown. It, it's, and we'll keep Station 4 for training. But um, people are coming in looking for these spaces. Oh, and we have been talking to Barnes & Noble about coming into the Broward Mall. So we're not looking to let them go. But um, I have a, a vision of, of where we can go and then, and I want to have that meeting too, and I've, I'm the one that brought it up initially earlier in the year, and we've had so many daggum workshops. I mean, just meeting after meeting after meeting, and now in the middle of budget, I still want to have that workshop. I think it's so important to get everybody's input on how they see different areas of the city. And so we're pretty much built out, so now it's called infill. You know, where people will tear it down and put something else up. So whether Publix takes it and tears it down and puts another Publix in, any other store could do the same and or they could retrofit. Yeah. So there are options on the table, not just one blinded vision of what can go in there. And that's what I think um, as people come for meetings, they have a blind vision of what they want to do for them, not for us. And that's, that's the hard part of seeing all these really smart people, but it sort of doesn't fit with where we think we want to go with the city, and that becomes the issue. And, and I, I, I love my Publix, I use ship for, with them all the time, and have for years, but um, I hate when I have to go in there and find my row of where I want to be. But but um, I agree with the capitalism of, of a business and trying it, but I think that in this particular case, um, their saturation is really not what we're looking for here. And so, um, I don't know if that answers your question. I just wanted to hear your thinking. You've been up here a while, and yeah, and we haven't had, it was sunshine. We can't ask, hey, what do you think should go there? We aren't allowed to do that. Yes. So I'm just kind of nudging around what we what will eventually come with a master yes. plan and a meeting and a workshop. But So we don't want the heart of plantation to have something vacant. We think that would be a viable property, whether it's Publix or not. Yes. That's what your opinion is. Absolutely. Just back to the liquor store thing, I think uh, several of you articulated that a Publix liquor store with reduced hours doesn't really bother me. That's just a side note. It's yeah. attached, uh, attached to Publix. It's clean, it's small, it's lower hours, it's everything that Councilmember Fadgen has. That's a side note. I just don't think a grocery store is needed that close to everything. Mm -hmm. Not right now. Maybe if, if Briar Mall changes everything, but right now at that location, I don't think so. I think we're still looking at, give, so given, take the, the time that we're talking at least two years, like 8601 even left. They were in the, the beginning stages of their project for over two years before it went 
to planning and zoning, and then subsequently here. So they had over four, so if they got buildings, it would be a minimum of two and a half years to build. So you're looking at an almost five year process. Um, I do have someone I want to bring in. Um, I sort of talked about it a little bit, but we'll talk about it much more at the next meeting because I just got a text that things opened up, what I hope is in our favor. But um, I just don't, I just think that corner and that is too important to just say, okay, we, we, one of the things we wanted with Plantation Walk was originality for its tenants. They did inform me yesterday, I was on a um, call with them, um, and Mr. Laystrom and uh, Jason. And they've finally started to incorporate some additional tenants that are unique tenants that are not franchises, which is what they told us from day one. And ladies, I think you'll like it. <laughs> um, but. Um, so I think we need to have a strong voice when we want to tell people we like it or we don't. And I think that's what a couple people have even said here is you guys got to show up to the game. You have to tell us what you want. Don't tell me after the fact, which is what happens many times. So. I think you have an opportunity to make a real decision about what you want to see along that corridor and um, whether you think it fits. Any other comments from council members? How about the public? Okay. I am not jumping off the bench. Oh, you only get three minutes? I have a bunch of questions. <coughs> Vicki Galfa, 9381 Northwest 18th Place, Plantation. I have uh, several questions. The meeting that was on December 14th, where was that published? Well, he left. Holmes, do you know where that meeting was published? We can ask Mr. Voigt. Mr. Holmes is right behind Mr. you. Mr. Holmes is right behind me. Damn it. <laughs> it's, it's sent out uh, to uh, individuals within the circumference of the property to notify them. Uh, because they are considered to, to be those individuals that are most impacted uh, by it. So it's a community meeting for uh, those entities. Do you, so. do you recall the radius of that for, for something like that? It didn't go as far as my would, house, you know that. Well, it's not going to. It's mostly businesses, but it would have some residents. I'm just not sure how far it would go. So I believe the circle is in one of their slides. It was 300 yeah, feet. I, I, I okay. recall seeing it, but I don't well, want to look down and dig in here. Whenever. Okay, well, I have, I have several questions from Mr. Voigt or Mr. Holmes. Um, how many employees will be at Publix? About? I, I have no idea. I'd have to. So, uh, employee at Publix, say you have 50, which is about right for a size more, but for that size store. Where are they going to park? If you only have 159 parking places, there's only 109 left for any of those people that are going to shop there because if we had a rainstorm like we did today when I came here, I'm not going to go walk to Publix. And if I need something, I'm going to get in my car and drive there. So there goes that. The so back of the building. So, uh, Mr. Alford, how many um, parking spaces? Mike. Did you say you have they are providing 133, Five. so they're deficient by 21 spaces per the code requirement. Thank you. Sure. Um, so where are the employees? We don't know where they're going to park. Um, when you leave Barnes & Noble, and if you leave on one of the either Federated or you leave on 6th Street, you cannot go east. Are they going to change? I mean, you cannot go east on on one of them and you can only go west on the other. So you're going to see everybody doing the U-turns by the Marriott. Um, are they going to change that? The west side of the shop faces the hotel. I'm sure the hotel guests would be really happy to hear that the public gets delivery at 3 and 4 and 5 in the morning 
and um, they paid whatever they paid for their room, and they're going to have that all night. Um, to have a public three miles. That's an excellent point. Thank and you. give her back her time. I apologize. <laughs> but, but it's it's it's. I mean, it's just I. Publix is my place to shop. It's my go-to place for a lot of things. I the new Publix was my old Publix. It's getting. I'm getting used to it. It's huge. But to have a Publix three miles from another Publix with a liquor store. I mean, what are we? A bunch of alcoholics? Oh, like three blocks. Oh, three. You're right. It's three eighths of a mile. Right. I looked at it. It was three eighths of a mile. We're going to either going to be breeding a lot of alcoholics, or um, you know, I mean, a liquor store and a, and a grocery store is fine, but that location is just not it. Put them in the corner of the Broward Mall. I think there are shopping centers that have upscale grocery stores. Publix did it because they probably don't want Sprouts or Whole Foods, or as I call it, Whole Paycheck, or any other liquor store, any other grocery store to be there. So Publix said. We've got the money. Let's just get that property. So I'm not on the council, but I vote against it. And just remember what I always say. There's an election coming up. Oh, Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gelfund. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Thank you. Any other comments from people in the chambers or online? <laughs> Any other questions of Mr. Voigt? I, uh, if I could, I, I was going to say I don't have all the public's people here. I think we're all surprised by the degree of uh, animosity toward public. So no, we all said we love public. <laughs> I just don't want one so closeness. Well, I, and I'd say I would ask if we could table this so that we could readdress it because no, I say no. Well, it's, well I, 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 I to council president and stuff, but. Well, that's why I'm, I'm asking to table this, just because this is kind of blindsided by these comments that we were not expecting. So, uh, well, not not quite that easily, but yes, we did not expect to be such a negativity toward publics. So I have to say, yes, I'm very surprised by that. Everyone of us expressed we like publics, and we even like the public's liquor store. We just, but I, it was but, I mean, it is, it is, it's yeah. a, a grocery store can go there. Obviously, we need some yeah. waivers, but you could put a grocery store there. I think any building going there would need some waivers. Yeah, uh, fair enough. Go ahead, Councilmember Sorrell. But to Mr. Voigt's point, um, you cruised through review, you cruised through planning and zoning, right? Unanimous uh, approval. Uh, that was like anywhere. five minutes at planning and zoning. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, the, the staff has not raised any and issues, and they haven't said there are any concerns there's on There's some the heck of good discussions here, and there's a heck mm -hmm. of a good things that council's brought up here. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, you, you're right. You're, you're at a disadvantage now. And I would see why it would be a surprise to you, because there wasn't anything like this. That's what I was going to ask, is what did P&Z say? Just one and they didn't say anything Thank about it. No, they just it was a very quick approval, you know, just right. literally a minute or something. Right, okay. Um, it's um, so that's what I'm just saying, and I did not receive I, any. I don't know. I don't know if tabling it's going to change any minds, though. No, but I, I just would like to have publics be able to know exactly what's going on, see if they want to address that. It's uh, I because they could make a move to drop the liquor store. Or they could. Or they could. Or Greenwise or something else. Or just make the whole thing a liquor store. <laughs> <laughs> Liquor superstore, yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. We have I, I personally wouldn't mind if you tabled it for that reason, but I, I don't think it's going to change my vote. I'm, you know, I think I'm a no. Okay. So, uh, Councilmember Horland, your hand went up. Go ahead. I just want to say I, I feel for Mr. Boyd. He's here, uh, you know, advocating for the applicant. But I think again, um, this is why it's important for this council uh, and the mayor and administration and department heads to sit down and start to. Um, talk about our vision for the city because I think that for many years um, applicants have been cruising through and um, you know counting on approval and I think you know as the mayor said we don't have a lot of land left to develop and now when we're talking about infill we have to make very careful decisions 
And I think, you know, by and large, this council is, you know, we're dealing with the consequences of everything that's been approved before us. And now we have to make very delicate decisions. And um, so I, I, you know, I understand where Mr. Wood's coming from. Um, and perhaps that's a disservice to the uh, applicant, and that's why it's important that we all sit down and talk about the vision of the city. Um, and I, I don't think that it was animosity toward public, but, and, and I'm not, you know, the, the liquor store is not as big of an issue for me, um, but again, it's the walkab walkability, uh, the, um, I think it's an opportunity for uh, public to just, uh, you know, push out the competition and get more market share, and, um, I'm not going to change my vote if it comes back, so I would not be in favor of tabling it because I don't think that this provides the walkability for the people that live in Midtown. And um, so that would be a no vote for me to table, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you for that input. Councilmember Andrea, go ahead. Mr. Boyd, I would not mind tabling it, and I would make a motion to table. I know that you have been caught off guard. Um, and I don't want you to misinterpret anything that was said. I think everyone here, uh, we don't have negative feelings towards Publix. I think we're all probably patrons of a public supermarket, but I know that you know you have been um, taken aback by this. So I would motion to table item number 17. <laughs> I appreciate it. One thing I would add is remember they have a lease contract with the property owner and depending on how this ends, I don't want them to be in litigation and go, what happened? No, you know, we I'd like to have this to, have to have please, yes. Council, second. We have a motion, so we have a motion and a second. We have a comment from Councilmember Fadgen. Sorry. It's okay. I'm, uh, I think, I think tabling makes sense to have the representatives and publics to be there. You know, uh, there was a lot of comments and uh, probably based off rumor about the cream wise, maybe they're open to changing it to a different type of store um, that could be beneficial to that discussion because it seemed people were open to that. Um, so I would be in agreement with tabling it. So, okay, I think we've, do we, we have a motion and a second. Any comments from the public? Oh, yeah, I'm just tired. <laughs> if you knew about today. Uh, uh, City Clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Sorrell. Yes, yes, yes to, table. to table. The motion to table, one second, we're voting on table. Yes to table. And it, uh, you know what, we, we're, just to be clear, we, we're, we're addressing all three together, correct? This is tabling all three, correct? Yes, no, it's, no. No. No, it's one at a time? One at a time. Okay. So this is, let me go back. 17. This is item 17. So motion and a second to table. Go ahead. Council Member Sorrell. Yes. Council Member Andrew. Yes. Council Member Fadgen. Yes. Council Member Horland. No. Council Member Anderson. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you very Number much. 18 is still the public site. Same motion. We, Attorney Morgan, just for procedure, we, we would have to address each one, correct? By the, okay. by the, if you're taking in all of them. Right. So yeah, item, so I, item 18, motion, I, well, someone go ahead. Motion to table. Item second. Second. 18. Right. second item 18 for motion to table. Um, city, uh, city clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Sorrell? Yes. Council Member Andrew? Yes. Council Member Fadgen? Yes. Council Member Horland? No. Council Member Anderson? Yes. Item number 19. Motion to table item number 19. Second. City clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilmember Sordal? Yes. Councilmember Andrew? Yes. Councilmember Fadgen? Yes. Councilmember Horland? No. Councilmember Anderson? Yes. Thank you. Thank, item thank you very much. Is the Chen Med item 20 and 21. Is the applicant here? For Chen Med? Is Mr. Boy, Mr. Boy, are you representing Chen Med? I'm sorry, yes. It's I okay. I, did, you're, I'm, I apologize. It's okay. Um, is there a presentation or? presentation for this one? This is the conditional it's use. It's loaded up, yeah. It's a conditional use in a parking waiver to put yeah. in a medical center. Conditional use because it's more than so many thousand square feet. Yeah. Parking waiver because a medical use is a big user. But, and, but you know how empty Westgate Plaza is. Mm -hmm. This is the one they, the, the, the geriatric clientele that they usually shuttle have them. shuttle them by Uber and Lyft services and uh, 
And this is the architect here, Robert Kirschkessner, who is a plantation native. And uh, so it's... I am. Plantation native or resident? You I, actually a resident. I wasn't born here, but... Long time. Uh, I remember when Broward Mall was a cow pasture. Cow pasture. Me too. So which high school did you go to? South Plantation. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I actually used to uh, skateboard through Westgate Plaza when I was uh, a kid. There and, you go. Uh, when there was a pantry pride. There was yeah. a pantry pride pantry and a pride. gas station on the corner. Yeah. And uh, I used to ride my bike when I was a little older. It's my high school girlfriend worked at Baskin Robbins and I walk her home which she lived right on the street next to and I live right down the street from Westgate so I actually really you know I'm I'm actually in very you know very much in favor of uh, Chen Medical there and just and being familiar with the area and I grew up down the street so I think, I, I think it's in the documents hasn't it had a challenge with getting attracting and retaining tenants there and so it certainly has Westgate Plaza you know they did that real big makeover and they've still got a lot of empty space and this is taking it off of Broward kind of out of sight taking good space <laughs> that they would like to yeah. lease that was not being necessarily the most attractive place in the in the shopping center okay councilmember Andrea you're up for first with comments just a question can you repeat something you said about, because I was very concerned about the parking. I was there yesterday, and around 1 o'clock in the afternoon, there was hardly any parking spaces available. Well, I'm actually glad to hear that. They've been struggling there so badly. But we have the, the representative here, if you need to hear from him. Well, the, uh, the spaces all in the back and on the west corridor generally are not used at all and that's where Chen Met is go is proposing to go. I was there yesterday and I'm telling you there were hardly any spaces available because remember you have in the daytime which I'm assuming that's when you know you would have the majority of your clients there you also have like that um, cosmetology school so a lot right. of right there were a lot of cars there. Well there so but you mentioned that, that a lot of the patients most of the Uber, they don't necessarily drive. That's correct, and I, we have a study in the in the parking study, Chen Med other locations, they don't they deal with a lot of people from places like Covenant Village or Century Village who don't drive themselves. So you don't have the car parked there. So either a family member caretaker drops them off and picks them up, or they have this contract with both Uber and Lyft that do hundreds of rides where they pick them up, drop them off, just like anybody else on Uber and Lyft, and they're gone. They're not taking a parking space, and they come back and pick them up, a different driver then. It's not like somebody's going to get sit there and wait. Right. So they're, and they don't have buses or transport vehicles themselves. So their model has proved to be very effective, and that's what the parking study says, that they would always think there would be at least 75 extra spaces available when this place is open. Well, I think if you go back in the back corner, though, where the employees would park, there are a lot of spaces back there. I drove the yes. plaza yesterday yeah, there afternoon. There were a lot of spaces back there. When I visited, it was in the middle of the afternoon several times. I didn't notice a lot of parking. Uh, of but that's not good. But yeah. maybe it depended on a certain day or an event there. Maybe. maybe something special was happening yesterday. But yesterday, there, there were not a lot of spaces at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Like I said, I'm good for the health of the shopping center, but I'm surprised. You know, it's uh, but in our position is this is not going to impact that significantly because you're not going to have okay. you know someone like a pediatrician parent bringing the child who waits through the whole thing and then leaves. Okay. You know, but I'm I'm very glad that you know somebody is coming into the, that Westgate shopping plaza and that it's revitalized. So. Yes, it's coming back definitely. I've been working closely with them in the price choice over there. So, um, okay, as long as as long as you're aware that the yeah. parking could be an issue. Yeah, I've, I've read some comments on the staff comments, and I know they they um, they did comment that um, Chen should put a, a sign in the staff lounge and other areas of the establishment that you know employee parking should park in the back away from things and. We've already submitted plans for plan review. I've already put those comments on. Not that that matters anything, but um, he's done a lot of chin med, so he's their their architect. Yeah, and I actually, you know, I've grown to really respect the company. And uh, my mother, when she was elderly, I took care of her, and I I didn't I wasn't aware of chin med at the time, 
And I mean, I, I would have to take her to the doctor, take her somewhere else for x-rays, go somewhere else for medications. I mean, it's, it was really difficult. So um, I know there's a big benefit, you know, to their, their business model, very positive uh, to the community and patients. And okay. So. Any other questions of the applicants? Any comments from the public? Any comments online? Councilmember Horland, anything? No, I'd like to make a motion to approve, Mr. President. We have a motion. We have a second. second. Did you just say second? Council second. Sortle. Is that motion. 20 and 21 or? Just 20. 20, okay. wait, one at a time. So item 20. Yep. Just to be clear, that was for 20, correct? Um, Sortle and Horland? Yes. Yes. So, yes. City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Yes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> now you say Sortle. Council <laughs> Member Sortle. Yes. <laughs> Council Member Andrew. Yes. Councilmember Fagin? Yes. Councilmember Horland? Yes. Councilmember Anderson? Yes. Thank you. Item number 21. Motion to approve, Mr. President. Second. Motion and a second. Any comments from the public online, in person? Hearing none, City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilmember Sordal? Yes. Councilmember Andrew? Yes. Councilmember Fagin? Yes. Councilmember Horland? Yes. Councilmember Anderson? Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Boyd. Yeah, thank you for your support. I really appreciate it. I really do. Comments by council members. I think we've gone this way for a while. Councilmember Sorter, you want to start? Yeah, I have. I have a few items, but they're all pretty short. Uh, just a thought. I watched the, the, we had our budget presentation last meeting. May I, su may I suggest maybe next time we go first with the department that has the most money, that is the most budgeted? So rather than have to wait and then at the end speed up, let's go the, the, the biggest item first and go down to the bottom. That's just a thought. Um, computer, um, we're all getting two-factor authentic authentication. I had mine done today. I would like to suggest the council members when they show up, make sure you bring your phone, make sure everything is charged, and make sure you have your passwords ready, including knowing your iCloud password because it's a pretty detailed thing of what they did. It's a good idea. Uh, it's great for security and everything, but I'm, I, it takes less than half an hour, 15 to 30 minutes. So. Um, July 4th, uh, November 20th last year at the parade, we had middle school type kids on bikes weaving in and out. The police stopped them once, and then they kept going. We're in the car one time, my wife and I and my family, and there's a kid here biking this way. He dives behind me. There's a kid out getting candy, and we're lucky that kid didn't get squashed, and the biker even went to that outside of him. Um, look, I, I believe in good policing and, and talking people out of the foul and everything. I say we stop them once. If they continue to do it, I say we take away their bikes and um, let their parents come visit us the next day because I don't want a kid getting squashed. That's my thing. I'm serious about this stuff. There's three and four-year-olds walking to pick up candy, and, and the kids are going like that. That's my input on that. Um, I don't know if you guys heard. They are uh, one apartment complex is charging for parking at um, across from um, Starbucks, Broward, and Pine Island. If you're a guest and you park, the complex charges two dollars an hour. So a woman, a grandmother who goes to watch her kid pays 10 bucks even though she's a guest. I know we can't do anything about it, I don't think. I don't know if anybody's here about this. Anybody have any comments? I did not hear about that. Mayor? Well, I'm not loving it. I mean, you know, that's really, that really crosses the line. Yeah, um, but I, I don't think there's, that's private property. We have right. no say in that. Nothing we can do about it, I know, but. No. No, it's, it's an apartment manager, um, I forget, it's made Axel. from Kim. Yes. And they had done an improvement. Just, what word did you say? What? Axel. Okay, I was looking at yeah. Okay. Yeah. Keep going. They'd done an improvement? Uh, an improvement, <laughs> yeah, a few years ago, and a lot of us were there. Um, but it was only, for, for me, it was only a halfway job to try to increase their tenancy and... Uh, I, I don't know, um, but it is it's private property, and sure. I'll, I'll look further to be sure. But I don't think so. I, I think I think we're beat. It's just rents are going up. Everything else is going up, and here 
they're trying to jab their guests yes. who are trying to park. It, it just seemed wrong to me. So, um, what their parking lot? Yeah. Well, well they, they, they own it. Oh, right, but they have an occupancy uh, license to operate. Well, usually, in the you're, lot. Um, yeah. it's part of their docks. Yeah. And, and they, it seems like they have plenty of parking. I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead, Mary. But they, whether you're leasing or buying or, or an owner in Fee Simple, you get an assigned parking space. And that's, again, up to the property manager and how they do that. So maybe they took away, or, oh, no, you said they had the guest spaces. They were just charging. For the park in the guest spaces. Wow. Yeah, yeah, that seems a little yeah. And um, I will be out of uh, the area on vacation Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, for those wondering when I get back. Um, and I'm not sure if my city phone will work. So anybody who needs me, email me. That's it. Thank you, President Anderson. Um, just tomorrow, last day of school. So thanks to all the teachers, administrators, bus drivers, support staff. I wish you all a restful and safe summer. Have fun. Uh, Juneteenth is Sunday, June 19th, and we'll recognize it here in the city of Plantation on Saturday the 18th with the Plantation Historical Museum and the Helen B. Hoffman Plantation Library at 10 a.m. So I want to thank Ms. Knapp for inviting me to open that ceremony. This is also the start of June for Caribbean American Heritage Month. We celebrate and honor the achievements and contributions of all of our Caribbean immigrants and their descendants in our city. Uh, next council meeting, I'll be bringing up proclamation to recognize Alzheimer's and Brain Awareness Month. And of course, this is also Pride Month. Um, and then I just want to remind everybody, especially uh, with our recent weather events, that this is disaster preparedness time and you have until June 10th to purchase any supplies and be tax exempt. Those are all of my comments. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Andrea. Go ahead, Councilmember Fashion. Um, just quick, uh, June 6th was the 78th anniversary of D-Day. 70 million people served in World War II. There's 240,000 living veterans left of, uh, that served in World War II, 2,500 of which are still living who um, actually actually participate in D-Day. So they changed the world, um, reflect on them. And then I'd like to thank uh, Steve Rogers. He invited me over to his office last week just to go into uh, his budget in a little bit more detail. And then I uh, had a couple of conversations about some other things that were kind of on the horizon. So I appreciate his time there. That's it. Thank you. Mayor? Uh, thank you. Um, I attended a homeless um, dinner on Friday night at Signature Grand and met many new people, including some um, one of the newly appointed uh, school board um, people that was appointed by uh, Governor DeSantis. And as it turned out, um, he is uh, promoting a program that we have Laura working on and so um, putting them together a little more and stuff. But it's always nice to meet new people. You never know who you're going to see and meet. Um, on Sunday, um, we attended the South Plantation High School graduation, uh, which was lovely. Uh, tomorrow, we attend Plantation High School graduation. Um, yay. <laughs> yay. And that's at the Broward uh, Performing Arts. And um, Sunday is the uh, ribbon cutting for Calouse. So um, you got a new spot for date night. It's Sundays? I didn't, I don't, I'm not aware of that. Yeah. It's on my calendar. Uh, is the chamber involved or do they know? Or? To my knowledge. Understood. Sunday, do you know what time? I'll Five contact them. Okay. I will confirm that for you. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And um, Nick, send them a coconut. <laughs> um, but um, lots of good things happening around the city. Um, continuing my listening tour with all the employees again. And um, a lot of good responses. And um, so, and happy people. Uh, 
they're happy that we continue to fund their departments in a, a very healthy way so that they have the tools to do their jobs. Um, Jason and I are just about finished with the budget and the ARPA, and that will be brought to you all. Um, so, um, I don't know, we're rocking along. We're, uh, Carol's working a lot on the debris and the waste management type issues, um, and which we will, again, communicate to you. But lot, again, I, I know it sounds silly when I say it, but there is a lot going on in the city, which we're really excited about. So, thank you. Mayor, I'm sorry. Yes. I just wanted to bring to this is, hopefully it won't be a conflict, but it's, it's going to be close. On Saturday the 18th. You'll be out. No, just we have the ribbon cutting for the fire station at 9, and then we're having the Juneteenth at 10. Yeah, it'll and be so out. <coughs> we will be? Okay. Yeah. It'll be short and sweet, the ceremony. Sweet. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you'll be fine. Thank you. And I forgot to say Happy Father's Day to all yeah, the dads, too, right. on the 19th. So Happy Father's Day. There you That's go. Before the next meeting. Say Happy Birthday. Say Happy Birthday to who? <laughs> Is it your birthday? On the 21st. She just wants to use it. Wait a minute. I mean, he wouldn't be a father. No, 23rd. That's right. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. What the heck? Okay, All not right. sure where that's going. And um, I, too, was at the South Plantation graduation. It was very nice. It was yes. nice to see, uh, see our old alma mater. Not yours, but it was still nice being there. Yeah. Uh, hmm? It was probably awesome. It was awesome. It was. It was nice. Yeah. It was nice. Um, attorney, I'll, I'll wait to after. I'm, I'm done. I'll okay. Ahead. I just wanted to provide an update on the Town and Jupiter case. Uh, on the second of this month, the Briarly, the city's um, board of directors met and had a discussion about the matter, and they've agreed. And I know some of you all were there. Uh, to support the Florida League of Cities, but not provide an, its own amicus for the the lawsuit. So I wanted to provide that update. I know Carrie had mentioned this case in the past uh, couple weeks with you all. Um, it will affect the public's uh, application, for example. We'll just, uh, for purposes of the piece of the litigation that the cities are concerned about, will re-advertise the next time it comes back for you all instead of, you know, tabling it to a time certain. So that's the, the crux of the issue that, you know, we've been looking into. So I wanted to give you all that update. Okay. Um, I'm going to go to, it's, I'm going to go to Councilmember Horland for her comments. I, I just saw an attorney <laughs> and I went to him and I, I'm, go ahead, Councilmember Horland, go ahead for your that's comments. Okay. Okay, thank you, Mr. President. I'll try to keep it brief. And thank you, Mr. Morgan. I was going to update everyone on that. And I want to thank um, the administration and the council members um, who were able to attend the Bar Reed City's luncheon. It was an honor to host it in the city of Plantation. I heard nothing but uh, great comments about our hospitality and how beautiful our city is. So um, that was great. And we had Superintendent Cartwright there from Brown County Schools talking about the referendum uh, and encourage everyone to vote for that. Um, just a couple of things. I didn't jump in on the um, access apartment conversation. Um, you know, this is one of the things when we talk about development, these apartment complexes become value properties, and that was an investment opportunity. And the company, the investors who came in and made all those changes, they were right there. They didn't make a, uh, all of the changes. Uh, they have since moved on. And now someone else owns that property. That property. Um, I had gotten involved while it was a private property. There were some residents who had uh, issues, ongoing issues with the elevator, and um, we were able to get some movement on that. So I think while we can't get involved, perhaps we can just mention to management that um, the residents are complaining on Facebook, and I think this paying for parking um, is really a bad. A bad idea, but anyway. Um, again, I want to thank the directors uh, for uh, taking time to meet with me. We had some very valuable meetings, as well as Laura. Uh, there's a lot of great uh, things going on coming forward. 
I'm very excited about Juneteenth. Thank you, Councilmember Andrea, for being involved in that. Um, we're waiting next week. It's busy. Uh, the Pride Parade will be happening in Walton Manors that day, and of course, Father's Day. Um, I wanted that conversation about the hurricane shutters. I had met with Ginger Baker and a few of the other residents about some other issues, and I did look at that property. What I'd ask is if whether we bring forth an ordinance or not, I think uh, since we're in hurricane season, it might be uh, a good idea if we have a social media campaign about hurricane shutters um, as we get to the end of hurricane season and about how long they can stay up and removing those, if we could educate the public about those special safety issues that the mayor brought up. Um, I'm going to close with some sad news that I received tonight. A uh, longtime plantation resident and Park East board member, Rolf Stahl, has passed away. Um, I reached out to Sandy Gracie this evening. If you know uh, Rolf, he was 84 years old, still involved in the Park East uh, HOA. He was a board member. He loved this city. Um, it is my understanding that um, actually Brittany from Parks and Rec, Rolf would show up to the aerobics class. At Jim Ward, he did not show up. And she called the PD for a wellness check. Um, so uh, I know Council Member Fadgeny and I saw him. He was an involved member at St. Gregory's. He was an usher there. And uh, he was really cared about this community and was involved. And I just want to um, send my condolences to his family and to the residents of Park East to uh, consider him a friend. So uh, thank you and happy Father's Day to everyone next week. Thank you, Council Member Harlan. Okay, with that, I'm going to adjourn the meeting. Thank you very much for hanging out.